Welcome to Paper Play Action. I have here, we have Devon. Yep, yep, good, my guy. Yep, yep, yep. New York boy here, chilling, chilling. There we go. And then we also have Pitler. Yo, 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 Nuke boy about to blow up New York. Wait a minute, you're, you're hold <laughs> Ah, it's been a fun ride. Why are we threatening New York? <laughs> <laughs> Mainly Devon. Not I mean, everybody threatens New York. Every time it's like, oh, let's, where would a bomb hit, hit this thing? And it was, the example is New York City. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> New York is threatened in like every form of media ever. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's, there's an easy fix to this, Devon. Just stop being New York. But New York is lit. Stop it's, being, yeah, New York is lit. It's about to be too lit. <laughs> yeah. You want it to be lit? Now it's going to be very lit. It's going to be on fire. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it's just a uh, That'd be really unfortunate, though. The New York firefighters already have it rough, man. They really you do. Get, you know, so many people don't need to be even into more... one location. Tons of fires. Mm hmm. Well, at least it's not as bad as uh, California, though. Yes. Yeah. Either you're freezing or you're burning. It's honestly That's like true. the whole West Coast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are doing over there, but... Stop spontaneously bursting into flames, please. It's <laughs> weird. They're standing there like, how the fuck? How the fuck? <laughs> 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 just, just look at like... How did that happen? <laughs> there was nothing to do it. <laughs> Just started. Only you could prevent forest fires. Why aren't you doing anything, huh? Hmm? Exactly. Do something. Smokey would be disappointed. <laughs> Smokey about to get that smoke on God. <laughs> Alright. So, how have you guys been? What you guys been up to? <laughs> uh, living in New York, enjoying life. <laughs> might stay here i'm trying to like kind of like crazy like kind of confused but new york is bu busting get my driver's license here please please i really hope i don't die with that <laughs> i'm so scared <laughs> why did you just immediately go to your house? i don't die with that that's... it's like such a big difference between i'm gonna get my driver's license and i hope i don't die <laughs> i know because i've been scared of this for years i've been avoiding because the fucking public transport is so amazing i mean sometimes it's bad but it's like it still gets me to the place but mm -hmm. driving is still good i will never find parking but and it's still dangerous out there there's so many like, negatives to driving but it's still a lot of positives yeah the ability to just kind of get places mm -hmm. uh you can kind of do it faster than public transportation honestly yeah, honestly it, it's like it takes useful. it takes just me better convenience hour 30 minutes to get to work um, with uh, public transport with like driving to be 25 minutes or 30. so yeah so you can just leave a lot later mm-hmm well, speaking of uh, public transportation, I just found something interesting about our city of uh, public transportation. GTA? Uh, no. Uh, we have electric bus buses. Full on electric. Oh, I've heard about this. That is cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I was driving past the train station earlier today, which is also the bus station. Um, and there was a full on, like, lamppost charging station for electric bus on there. Like, that's brilliant. Because since the bus only has to drive around a specific path, pretty much this entire... Uh, uh, entire day that makes sense as long as you put tra traffic systems there you can just pretty much have a um a single bus going through uh constantly like a um trolley system like in san francisco mm -hmm. there's no tracks on the road uh, see we do like the trolley system in trans uh in san francisco it's it's weird it's a weird system but it's kind of fun you know what i mean like it's just yeah. like all right we got a trolley mm -hmm. it's just gonna go on this run track it's not exactly a train <laughs> but it's some weird yeah. in-between thing just, where it's like not on. a train, but it's not a car. <laughs> it's, I guess at one point it was efficient. I don't think that anymore, but yeah. I mean, it probably still is. I mean, you could ask anybody from San Francisco. They probably still use it. There's probably a ton of people that still no, they use still it. still use it. I'm not sure like if it's effective fully because you only have one train on that same pathway the entire time. That's fair. Or trolley, sorry, since it's not really big. Wait, can you really only have one trolley on a trolley system? Or can you not have multiple trolleys? Because the tracks only go uh, forward and back, I believe, since you can't really circle around. You go circle oh, around okay. north, yeah. towards the end, but still follow the same track back down and up, down and up. Fair enough. Hmm. I, I believe. Any San Franciscans who are actually listening to us... They probably have, like, two or three on probably the same screaming. track, but obviously they can't go down and up. Well... I'm assuming that it goes in a circle, right? Like in, in a huge circle? It does go in a circle, yeah. but I think it loops like near the end by the same middle track uh, regardless because you can't have two running at the same time, at least 
on one well the, you know the the big hill that's overlooking the the bay okay, that yeah. part i think is only the one tra- track the rest of the city i cannot say that's fair all right hmm. just been chilling uh, good day, Devon, sorry what no no you're good i was thinking and yeah that's crazy i never knew about that charlie's you learn something every day for real but so, how's you how you doing Bailey? how's life it's a good, it's a... Um, yeah, it's, it's fine. Uh, watching TV. Watch uh, Gotham Knights. Why did you do did that? You do this? Why did you do this? <laughs> this is not even like fun. fun in the way like we watched Velma. This one's just kind of hot garbage off rip, off concept. And you did it by yourself. <laughs> well, that's why I thought Devon would like it. So I guess it's hot you garbage. You did it by yourself. He likes to make fun but of I know you did it by yourself. Don't do it by yourself. Because you wouldn't no, watch it. No, I do it with friends. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to get you to watch it with. And friends. Is it even Jesus. worth watching, like in a fun no, way? See, that's what I'm no. saying. <laughs> Maybe one day, because like we watch Velma, because we got like a chuckle and making fun of it and stuff like that. Same thing with Santa Ink, but like you mentioned that. So I can't uh, even Gotham think Knights to is... start to find Gotham Knights to yeah. be sort of funny. It's just gonna be kind of like just, what? It's just cringe. They take a lot of liberties of the of the, of the Batman source material, obviously, and. Yeah, it's, uh... Oh, uh, oh, characters who are curious of money, so... Uh, Independence, um... Adop- another adopted son of Bruce Wayne that's not Tim, Jason, or, uh, Dick. Um... Mm-hmm. His name is Jeremy. Oh, uh, God. Uh, yeah. I was about to say, who? I about to scream. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Duella Dent is in it. Um... Who is so, not so, actually so, his daughter, but, you know, whatever it takes. I know, it's, yeah... Uh, it's 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 something. Um, let's see. Just show. No, not not it not Jeremy. Show. Sorry, the, Bruce's adopted son is named Turner. Turner Hayes. I've That's never heard these names. Much in my life. better. Yeah. Oh, okay. You'll you like this though. Probably not for this show. They got the um um the Dark Knight Returns. Robin Car- Carrie Kelly. Wait. Okay. okay. That's mm-hmm. probably the coolest thing they could have done out of that entire thing so far. They got spoiler, Stephanie Brown. Okay, that's pretty cool. Harper Rowe. Oh, okay, okay, fair. Yep. Harvey Dent's in it. Um, I don't know who the hell Brody Mur- Murch is in terms of the comics. I can't say I do either, which is unfortunate. He's... Oh, okay, so he's the son of Lincoln Murch, who's Owlman. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't... Yep. Out of all people, the son. A good pull, because Owlman's kind of cool, but like at the same time, it's like... Uh... Mm. We'll see. Yep, you got you got Clue Master, who's the father of Stephanie Brown. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, that makes Kirk, sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, we got uh, not uh, Gordon as a commissioner for Gotham City. This time it's Commissioner Yandel. I don't know who the hell that is. Why wasn't it just you know whatever? I I thought it would have just been Barbara, but you know whatever. <laughs> like I said before, they they're playing extremely fast and loose with the mythos. They do what they want. Apparently, they did. Which is also really weird. Uh, oh yeah, the Court of Owls, of course, is going to be uh, added. Is going to be involved with this as a as a villain. It's kind of like keep uh, using my favorite Batman stories just in the wrong ways. <laughs> because both Gotham Knights a show. Well, it's only seen the pilot so far. It's only that, but um, the uh, the game didn't do the Court of Owls too well as well. Well, that's <laughs> kind of the biggest thing, right? With the game, especially since we've been playing through it. I actually really like the concept of the Bat family without Batman fighting the Court of Owls. Like, that's really cool as a concept, and it works in the comics really well, because it's just kind of interesting. But in this case, it's like, who the, who are you people, except for obviously the ones that we obviously, like, spoiler, right, uh, Harper mm-hmm. Rowe, you know, those ones where it's like, yeah, you know what, you would know how to deal with this, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Dick would kind of also know, because his grandfather is part of the... Owls, yeah, but like somehow. most of these other people, I'm just kind of like, really? We're hmm. gonna try to deal with. All right, I guess. I mean, go for it. I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, that's. But it's just kind of. It is whatever. Is it just yeah. edgy? Like. It's I think sort of... it's just the edginess because they don't. Oh, right, forgot the Gotham TV show also did Court of Owls too. I forgot about that. They did. They did. They did do that. Poorly too. It's, it sucks because I actually would have liked to see the idea of the Court of Owls without them ever actually dealing with it. Gotham is such a waste of potential and kind of a waste of a like TV slot. Because 
I understood like, yeah. the idea of trying to be like, hey, we're going to do prequels to like all the villains and stuff like that that happened in Gotham. Gotham is an interesting enough setting that you can have that happen. The problem is that a lot of Batman's villains, and this is the biggest problem with the don't show, don't exist until don't after exist, Batman. Ex- yeah, exactly. Don't exist until after Batman exists. Kind of weird. Mm-hmm. So the Joker doesn't exist unless you do the Pale Man thing, which is kind of cool, but you know, they kind of F that up mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, the funny thing is, is with Gotham because they introduce and create like these the villains that show their uh, introduction because they did for Firefly, uh, Mister Freeze, and a bunch of others. But how they also do it because after a certain point, especially for Mister Freeze's massive waste potential, he really he has no motivation this time because his wife was purely dead. She kills herself to stop uh, to stop Freeze. He becomes the villain. He comes with Freeze, but. He still has the ice and condition. He still uses freeze powers, but he comes up with just pretty much a muscle head afterwards. Did they make Mister Freeze a muscle head? Yeah, because he he just he's a grunt after afterwards. After we see his introduction origin, he sees his condition. Um, what's his fucking name? They he made strange. one of the most nuanced and interesting Batman villains because he is morally gray and genuinely has a really good reason for doing what he's doing. Yeah, but they remove his reason. They, he barely has a line after after his introduction ever again. He's just literally just a villain to be there as muscle. He ha- he's not the one with the plan. He's just there to shoot and freeze people. That is it. Wow, what a waste! <laughs> That's crazy. They also did the thing with Poison Ivy, which was really weird. He was. Um, he w- yeah, that was weird because she was a little girl who got um he got touched by an inmate who's able to accelerate aging, became hot. Um, who also messed around hey, with, yo. um, yeah, I mean, she was hot. I, I that's, know. Well, that's, 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 that's the cast. Um, she was able to, she learned to mess with, um, like, toxins with plants, everything like that, just pretty much like a bot- botanist chemist. She then takes this weird Eastern medicine thing that turns her officially into poison ivy. She doesn't control plants, but she scratches you and, um, plants grow out of you, starting to su- poison and suffocate you. That is a weird way of doing that, but, you know, whatever. Yes. Also, ca- recast the same character three times in each one. First is the little girl, second is the grown-up version of the little girl, then the poison ivy of that grown-up. And then, I think they did something really cool with the Riddler, right? Where he was originally, yeah. they continued to keep him as the cop for a while before becoming Well, he was the, he was, yeah, he was the assistant to the uh, uh, G- GCPD, then he went insane after he pretty much killed his love interest. Uh, afterwards, when he they found out that he was he was arrested, became officially the Riddler, psych, uh, psych um, officially full of psychopath and everything, but very clever and in control. Until oh yeah, also the weird love uh, relation with him and Penguin, that was interesting. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, Penguin's gay in Gotham. I forgot to mention. That. That's actually that's not even that bad it's just weird it's not that bad it's just that the fact that 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 penguin is in love with the riddler in this one i get it for like in terms of friendship like oh okay and then just a weird love triangle because he finds another because riddler ends up meeting another girl who looks like the exact looks exactly like the one he killed <laughs> um she dies he gets tricked um he gets frozen after getting it's, it's a whole conflict thing uh between him and penguin Penguin gets betrayed uh, penguin freezes him Riddler apparently gets his brain condition where he goes back to his original self, no longer becomes a villain. He gets goes back to being a villain. It's this whole thing. It, it's, that gave it's just a such a mess. That's a wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it started off with some really nice love potential. And hate. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, you would hate how they made Solomon Grundy in this one. Isn't he just supposed to be a zombie? What the fuck did they do? Oh no 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 no. Okay, so originally, he, uh, 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 Solomon Grundy was a gangster working for uh, uh, Fish Mooney, which is a custom character. Uh, for Gotham, who played by um, uh, Will Smith's wife. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't even know she, she was involved she was in with that. that series. I ain't going front. <laughs> yeah, she, original gangster character for that one. Uh, she she was originally He was originally a muscle for him. Uh, he had a relationship with uh, Ti- Tigress, which is interesting. Um, she, that one. She played she by uh, Jessica Lucas. Think, but, all right. No, she should. She, no, she didn't. Absolutely not. She also the, is a, the, uh, a the mentor of Catwoman, who's a kid at this point. So, like, I'm a little confused Wasn't she, still. That's also a little strange, but, you know, it's... Also, yeah, they made Barbara Keene, James Gordon's wife, both um, Harley Quinn at one point, and the the, the replacement of Rachel Ghoul. It, it's so fucking weird. What the yeah, actual... yeah. Bro. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Like, any fans of Gotham would actually understand my points, because these are actual points in the show. Um, 
but yeah, no, Butch Gilzine is the former muscle head for uh, Fish Mooney's character. He ends up dying at one point after getting shot in the head. He gets revived, became Solomon Grundy, white hair, white face, gray suit, couldn't remember himself. But he then remembers his memory because of his friendship with the Riddler, and he goes back to relationship with Tigress again. <laughs> oh, he also has a mechanical hand because he got it cut off by... Um, uh, oh, yeah, Azazel. Azazel's in it, too. What? Yeah, it's what? a lot of villains. <laughs> okay, you know. Okay, let me list. Out, let me just list out the villains because you have Solomon Grundy, Joker, two Jokers. Yeah, I heard um, about that. yeah. Two Jokers, Riddler, Penguin, Ivy. Um, not Bane, but the Venom does exist in the show. That's fine. Firefly, Mister Freeze. Um, Firefly, okay, I guess, could exist. That doesn't really bother me with Firefly. Firefly's, you mm -hmm. know. Oh, they did Prometheus. I forgot about that. Pro yeah, they did Prometheus. Um, oh, Dollmaker. They did Dollmaker. Mm, it's fine. Yeah. Because uh... the idea is that there are supposed to be some criminals that exist before Batman. Like, there are just some that exist. Yeah. But I would have played around more with the idea of the criminal underground and those guys specifically. Like, Penguin works, right? Like, you could do Penguin. Pe pe Penguin, you can do. Mr. Ivy, yeah, Mr. Think... Freeze, you could do. Poison Ivy, not so much, because. That's kind of the whole thing, is that Batman witnesses. You can't do Joker without Batman. Yeah. You can't do Joker without Batman. Well, no, because they had the Pale Man origin stuff. So I was like, they could do that, right? Where he's like, well, you know. Well, they kind of, they, well, how they did it was he was already insane prior to it. And then they kind of matches it with uh, afterwards. Because they both... Okay, so one of the things that they did in, the, in Gotham that they just ripped off from the comics. Remember Death of the Family storyline where Joker cuts off his face? Yeah. They did that off rip? They okay. did. They, well, they did that off rip in the show because... Um, Jerome, the Joker character from the show, died. He gets revived. They, the revive fails, so the dude who's trying to revive him cut off his face to wear as a mask. He finds it again, like, you stole my face, I want it back, and just pretty much staples it back to his face. You know... They do a lot of... That's, yeah, sorry, yeah just... that's strange. That's just a little... That's they didn't. Oh, yeah, Hugo's strange. That. Forgot that. If that's yeah, Hugo line. works fine. He's, he's, he's appropriate for that kind of thing, honestly. Oh, um, Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter. Yeah, they that's that another fine one. Like, I'm just surprised at the ones that they chose to be like, hey, look, look, we're doing this one. It's like, you mean this one that shouldn't exist yet? <laughs> yeah. Like, Ra's al Ghul is probably the weirdest one because he, he existed, he died, he got resurrected in a very different way, mind you, and Bruce is still the chosen one even before he became Batman. That's a little... I mean, that makes sense, actually, sort of. Well, actually, no, it doesn't. Because isn't still the, a child. Yeah, like, he's supposed yeah. to be training with them. Oh, like, and uh, Talia is not a factor, by the way. Yeah, like, uh, that's why I'm like, it's a little weird, because he's supposed to, at some point, be training with Rish. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Okay, okay, so, yeah. So, this is the weirdest one, because I thought this was supposed to be a Hush reference. No, there's a walking around clone of Bruce inside uh, Gotham who looks exactly like him without the British accent. Um, he's just unable to feel pain um, and has scars on his face. He's uh, an experiment from Hugo Strange. He's never Why? explained of his origin. He has no explanation of uh, close uh, relations. I think this supposed to be a reference to Hush, but Thomas Elliot already exists in the show, too, so I don't understand. They added yeah, him no, for the fuck of it. <laughs> for real, like, it doesn't even make sense, because, like, Bruce Wayne, I understand that he kind of becomes, like, proto-Batman in that at some point, but, like, it's really weird, because yeah. it's like, why do you have a clone of him? He's not even anybody important yet. Like, why do you just have a clone of Bruce Wayne? <laughs> why is that just something yeah, you just yeah, casually yeah. have? It's it was it's it's weird choices, but yeah, that that was a. Uh, He's not Batman yet. Work. Like, why would you? It's like I have to clone him. Like, I can understand race, right? Like, race being like, you know, he's prophesized to be the one, right? We've been looking for him because obviously that's a thing with, you know, the League of Assassins. Um, they're very, like, deep into mysticism and things like that and all that other stuff. And obviously, they want someone to take over the mantle for race. Like, he wants to pass the mantle down to somebody else. So it's like, fine, right? You can you can make the argument that Bruce is the chosen one, quote unquote, uh, to <laughs> to him, right? Like he maybe it's prophecy. They went to talk to somebody. It, whatever, who cares? Like it, it works for the League of Assassins. Okay. Oh, what so I was, like, I was wrong. I probably didn't see the season, but Bane's also in the show. I, was well, I guess Bane's that. in the show too. Actually, yeah, Bane, Bane Bane works because Bane has a lot going on before he even puts on the mask in the first place or ever fights Batman. So it's like, mm -hmm. whatever. Like Bane. Is fine. Like, he can also be in the show. It's whatever. Yep. Clayface. I don't remember if Clayface actually just straight up has his origins happen. 
during the timeline of Batman. I I genuinely don't remember. <laughs> it was an experiment. I know that for sure. Uh, had let's to be. see here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Had to be. <laughs> Dollmaker. Oh, the Electrocutioner. I forgot about that. The Executioner. Um, mentioned Firefly. You know what? Flamingo. Is KG Beast in here? Because that'd be cool. <laughs> KG Beast is not in here as far as what I understand. For shame. <laughs> Actually. Oh, uh, Oh, that's right. No, they do. They do Holly Quinn twice. Once with Barbara Keane, and once with an assistant of Joker as well. Who her name was Echo. I don't understand why they tried to do Holly Quinn off rip though, especially since this is way before. Like, I don't know. That's just going to be my biggest complaint about the whole thing because everyone's like, some people might look at it. Oh, they did Killer Croc in this one. I forgot. Oh, that's kind of fun. But everyone's going to look at it and go like, well, it's an Elseworlds story. It's like everything happened before. It's like yeah, but it doesn't really excuse it. Like uh, the fun part about the Elseworlds stories. Is that they're taking something familiar and twisting it, right? Like it's mm-hmm. it's things happen, but like in a different way or something like that. Like you're you're seeing how they're twisting it, if that makes any sense, right? But yeah. with Gotham, mm-hmm. it's not. It's it presents itself as a as a piece about the city of Gotham before Batman showed up, right? So then you're looking mm-hmm. at it, going like, well, I want to see how the city played out and how all this stuff happened before Batman showed up. And if you're looking at it in that lens, it's like, well, then certain characters just shouldn't exist yet. <laughs> they just shouldn't. Yep. <laughs> it's like, and then other characters should be like kind of rising to power, or we get to see how far Gotham has fallen. We get to see Jim's fight against these kind of things and trying to keep the city from falling apart. Because Gotham is falling apart, but like it's not like literally on the brink of collapse every week until Batman shows up. So they, apparently they were doing their job. <laughs> apparently they were doing their job enough, and a, a few of these villains do die too. So like, so Batman's never gonna have to deal with them. Then? Yeah, that's, right? like that's weird. This is just never gonna have to deal with them, I guess. So it's just it, it's so strange. Yeah. Very lost. Gotham is weird. Gotham is very weird. They ran for five seasons. So it, uh, people awesome. liked it. I'm not gonna say that people didn't. I mean, I enjoyed it for the most part uh, in some performances because I thought like. Um, uh, uh, the the guy who played Joker, uh, the guy who also played Kyle Kessis from The Best Survivor, um, I thought he would. He, I thought his performance was pretty good as Joker. That's fair. Yeah, that's as, uh, as, as a pro as a pro Joker, I thought like that's I like you, I like you. Well, what else do you got, Billy? Oh, uh, that. Oh, I also recently went to the Gun and Knife show near home uh, today, and I bought myself a practice butterfly knife. Okay. Yeah. So no blade, no sharp, no sharp edges on this one, but pretty much. I, I'm just flicking around and using this as a fidget toy, uh, <laughs> spinning around and see if I can gra- scratch it without having to hit my knuckles or hit the blade side of the thing. Yo, get clean, but that'd right. be crazy. Oh, I'm I'm working on it. The granted, though, I see now it's not as, exactly practical as a weapon because doing this just as it's cool intimidation factor, but doesn't actually it, have a good. It's just grip a flex. It just sticks. Yeah, yeah, it's just a flex. Not really. A, it's great for concealment and fl- pulling it out, but. You know what the easiest way to just pull out a knife? Just pull out a fucking knife from its your, from where you have it. That's Every it. fucking movie, the guy has a butterfly knife. He's like, bro, chill. He's like, we get it. Well, chill. At the minute where you're doing, at the, between the few seconds you were doing that, I could just pull out my knife and stab you in the chest. Shot his ass. Or shot his ass, yeah. Like, it, it's 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 cool to fidget around, but that's pretty much all I've found that for useful. I'm just doing this to keep my hands busy at times, but yeah. Uh, beyond that, let's see. Oh, I've also played, um, been playing through the recent Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War game. Should I be my rant to the audience after I gave it to you guys? Just shorten it. Just shorten it? Alright. So, uh, like the games. Uh, have some few technical problems going through it with, uh, with the first Modern Warfare playing from the PS4 version. The cutscenes are the worst part about it. It lags for some fucking reason, with some green graphical glitches happening in the yeah. middle of it, where services just certainly turn pixelated green for no reason. Oof. It sounds bad. Yeah. Yeah. And the, but that's like the worst aspect of it. Uh, for The um, second Modern Warfare irked me a bit more in terms of straight up gameplay. Uh, the first one, um, the first issue I had was pretty much during a section where I, w- I had to pretty much craft items to survive through a section of the game. Um, the game bugged out, so I, I still had bullets, I still had my gun and all the items, but the game wouldn't let me change anything, it wouldn't let me shoot, it wouldn't let me change uh, my gun, despite enemies still shooting at me. <laughs> Oof. 
So I couldn't do shit and was stuck there for a good hour and a half. I didn't remember um, hour and the and campaigns half. for these. Yeah, I don't remember the campaigns for these being so buggy. Well, an hour and a half is not a here while. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was my experience recently with it. And, like, I, I mean, I had to redo the thing over and over again to avoid getting shot at. But I couldn't shoot. So I kept dying. No shooting. No shooting. And I got pissed off for so fucking long until I got past it. Um, the second one... It just hurt my eyes to play because I play it on high di- high dynamic range on my monitor here. Um, so this is what I call the J.J. Abrams bug. Uh, so in a game where you're looking at a light source, you have lens flare flying at your, uh, showing out your face, kind of just spreads around, around the screen. Lens flare in this level and moving forward the rest of the game, actually, was permanent. So you actually could see the lens flare from every light source um, through your walls in the entire level. Oh, yeah. So you see... <laughs> You see nothing but lens flare. So you were telling me about especially, this. <laughs> this sounds so it became hilarious. painful in one level when I was trying to sneak through. Um, typically, I because light sources are close by to you, I look up and it just blinds me completely. But there's nothing producing the light uh, on the wall itself. But I still see it because it's outside of the wall where the light source is. But it's still full on full beam brightness in my face. So it makes it difficult looking up right and up to see my environment. And I'm still getting shot at while I'm getting blinded by a fucking uh, strobe light. Hmm. It's it was crazy, but my biggest complaint of all three games so far, I'm still going playing through Black Ops Cold War. Uh, the campaign download, <laughs> that's my biggest issue. Each one is insanely long for the download because each game is a minimum disc about 100 gigs to da- just install. Oh, the game. Wow. You have to download the campaign separately. Um, in different packs per one. Uh, I think it was 46 gigs for the first Modern Warfare, 48 gigs for the second Modern Warfare, and 53 gigs for the Black Ops Cold War. The fact that you had to download them in three in separate packs irked me the most because you're making me waste so much time just to play my game. That is true. Uh, Jesus. You were losing it over that. I was there for that too. <laughs> <You> was... <laughs> uh, and it's 150 gigs just to play the fucking well, you, campaign. I'm not you even got this on PlayStation? Yes. Jeez, that's like like a third of your fucking storage. Yeah, straight up. Yeah, I I, I did I did the math. I was over seven hundred gigs right then and there for three <laughs> Call of Duty games. Bro. Call of Duty gotta work on that, bro. Activision gotta Activision. work on that specifically. If you're listening to this Activision, fuck you. <laughs> By some miracle of a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Just do a better job, bro. All you gotta do compress is make it smaller. Fucking... I don't know what the point yeah, is. Compress your fucking files is all you gotta fucking do. The campaign is not, shouldn't even be this huge. Just do what any other game is doing, please. <laughs> it's like we need more space. So nobody's going to play your game because we don't have space. See, we would like to have space, man. Slack. We would like to have space. Mm-hmm. Especially since there's so many games coming out. Like, Call of Duty can't be the only one, but we want you to make it the only one. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's like, that's actually a dick move. It's how people don't buy your game. Well, it's how people just decide I'm people just not going to play your it. Game. No, it's just yeah. how people decide I'm just not going to play it. Or, like, no, I'd, it I'd makes it even worse because things. these are still yearly releases. Expect another Call of Duty with the same amount of space requirement for this year coming up soon. I don't know what the fuck it's going to be. Probably going to be... I'm, if it's a sequel to fucking Vanguard, I hope they fucking improve on it. Just, yeah. But yeah, that's my week. I hate to complain. I didn't complain on the note, but that's what I've been doing. All right. Hey, well, what about you? Because we didn't actually get to hear what you've been watching or playing. Oh, but here's the thing. I've been like an NPC the last couple of weeks. I've been like, every, if I don't work, I play Fortnite or I study for my driver's test. So I, I'll just randomly go on TikTok. So I've That's not right. really been doing much. Only thing I've watched the last couple of weeks was Our Universe with Morgan Freeman. Which is fun. Even though it does jump from point to point a whole lot from <laughs> nature stuff to universe I, stuff. I, 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 show I, still good. It's amazing. I actually like that. It's like, oh, I don't want to learn about animals. I want to learn about the universe and just pop it up. It's like out of nowhere, man. Yeah, no, like you're talking, we're on the side, we're, we watched one episode together. It was like about bears and it just immediately jumps to like, Black the Black Stardust of the universe. <laughs> yeah. Like, holy shit, what the fuck? Bears be- <laughs> goes from small to big, small to big. Bears be hibernating, but you know, black holes suck everything. Like, hey, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, yo, wait, 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 wait. How are we get to you? <laughs> but it is kind of a vibe. Uh, yeah, especially with Morgan Freeman as a narrator. Uh, so nice. There's this one fact that I learned, the main fact I learned about that I didn't know about this before is the f- how we got water. 
is it was a, a meteor like a meteor ring around our universe that uh, planets came crashing in and then like it pushed the rocks or the meteors towards earth and mars and we got water so happy from that yeah just because we have a magnetic core is we got the ozone layer is the only reason why we got to keep the water mars had water but they didn't have a magnetic core so they lost so their water yeah. Yeah. yeah i was like damn well, there's, there's actually some frozen caps on mars so water is still technically there just not yeah running. it's not abundance like earth water is so important 70 percent of the <laughs> planet it's just water and and yet we're still trying to terraform mars yes we are so lucky to have that, water and we genuinely haven't discovered the uh enough of the ocean itself we actually haven't discovered yep. enough of our own planet which is crazy to think about uh, the thing is like i've noticed this in terms of like in, ter- in terms of uh investigation because people are less interested in knowing what the depths of our ocean versus like in the exploration of space like why is space less scary than the ocean i don't know I don't think either. Well, honestly, I think the number one thing is is that both of them are pretty scary. But uh, it's way easier to. I I think, based on what we can tell, it is easier to make something that is pressurized that doesn't have to worry about like, uh, like pressurized on the inside, so that way, like, Mm -hmm. it doesn't get crushed when it goes out into space. Like going out into space, it's not gonna get crushed, right? It's not a ton of weight. Well, it's it just depends it if you get, it gets you something too close because if you get too close to any other. Well, yeah. If you, I mean, like, just being in space will cause, like, yeah. won't cause it to get crushed, right? No. He was like, you just need to make sure that like oxygen can maintain in it, and we have to get it up there. And I'm simplifying rocket science, obviously, but you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, versus go down to this area and withstand pretty much the weight of the world. <laughs> 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 Can we make something like that? And it's like, uh, not we exactly. Can. It's it, we can, but like, that's tough. <laughs> I, I feel like the deep sea is more scary because we know that there's giant monsters down there that we don't know what they are. And it's way more scary to do that. Fine. There's li- I mean, there's that's life. True. It's potentially life in space that we haven't seen alive. Yet. Yeah, but so it's just out something... there. Like whatever's in space is just out there, out there. We haven't. Like... I know, but if we find anything sort of that equivalent, a random species of. Of alien or un- un- unexplainable life living just in deep space alone, I would still be fucked. Be fucking we have scared. To go very so like, far. I guess that's the thing. Space so far has just been empty. We haven't found anything crazy, but we're like, there's black holes. That's a monster on its own, right? Like there's exploding yep. stars. That seems pretty horrifying. <laughs> Things of that there's nature. There's giant asteroids that could potentially hit us. That's terrifying. Yeah, it's in of itself. but it's like it's nothing. That's like all right. It's like a natural disaster kind of thing, technically speaking, right? It's horrifying. We don't, have, right, a, we but... don't have a fucking Kraken <laughs> yeah. in space yet. But we, yet. Do, we know the for a would go fact crazy. that there are monsters down there. Correct. What kind of monsters? We don't know, but we know that they're down there. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we, we know for a fact we'll run into something I, crazy. I think it also might be like <laughs> generational fear because we've had for over millennia to over millenniums, actually, to fear the ocean over many, 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 many deaths of human life and loss versus space is still relatively new in our time span. That's true. True, true, true. But we also have the obvious thing of we're kind of destroying our planet. So it's like, we probably need to figure out a way to get off of it at some point. <laughs> That's why we should go to our depths and clean that shit up. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, Amani, think it's like, too late to fix this planet? I don't think it's too late to fix this planet, but I do think we probably need a backup plan because we're not doing a very good job at, like, you know, trying oh, yeah, to no, avert... the backup plan is No, the backup plan is the rich people get into a place, go to a different planet, leave us poor people behind. Yay. Yeah, I mean, if we can colonize it properly, like, fast enough, you know what I mean? We could just, we could just straight up be Gundam, sort of. I shouldn't say Gundam. Bro, Australia got destroyed. I'm staying on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying on Earth, bro. I should <laughs> It's gonna be lit here, bro. But, you know, anything else. Nah, I'd be down to go to one. If we got it, like, properly colonized and, like, everything set up. Like, if they got the Wi-Fi over there, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> they got the Wi-Fi they, over they there. Got, they got the good Wi-Fi over in Mars or whatever. Sure, why not? <laughs> He's like, why not? It's like forever to get games delivered over there. But, you know, maybe download speeds. You don't really have to worry about this much. <laughs> I will say this though, as a Dead Space fan, if we go to a different planet and there's a fucking marker, I'm I'm blowing that motherfucker. Oh no, I'm without question, mother- we don't have time for this, Ben. <laughs> I refuse. Blow- as, I refuse to I see deal anything, with the fanaticism of that. Yeah, no. If I see any sort of marker that looks creepy, I am blowing that motherfucking shit up. I'm just gotta go. Without question, I am. I am a scientist. I know to study, but I also know threats. 
Fuck that. Some things are need to be left alone. <laughs> you just survive and you see something that you've never described before and it's like, huh, that's crazy. Let's leave that to be. <laughs> Let's just not figure out what that is. Please. <laughs> Imagine if we were like out there and we just discover like a super space monster. Like we go out and just see like eyes peering back from the darkness. And you're like, you know what? Let's just stay on Earth. Right it's just not. Yeah. <laughs> we see we see eyes. We see the mouth of Azathoth like you know, we're just All going right, back. back. Yeah, just going back. <laughs> just Please, stay on Earth. No, space is bad. It's not space worth is it. Bad. Not worth it. Just stay back. <laughs> red alert. Red alert. <laughs> For real, red alert. Just, just go back. Oh, I wish Aaron was here because if we had anything close to like the Tyranids or to deal with in, uh, in our universe, we would be absolutely fucked. Imagine if we were just the last thing, <laughs> like the la like the last that, thing. The last like the Tyranids were happening, the right? But we're just yeah. the the last bit that like exists uh there's and, last and they're, they're just not life like, of that's the deal it's like they just leave it alone because they're like well i mean let's just not destroy everything right like there's just like, oh, we, no, no, like or at the very least it, they're like we think we've destroyed everything there's nothing else to look for and they just never found us <laughs> right they're like eh we're done they just assume we're done I'm like, eh, they're on an extra planet whatever <laughs> they're not intelligent enough they're just gonna stay behind exactly so we don't have to worry about space yeah, theory don't have to worry because about they it. get yeah, like they, we scared them off to like they're never gonna space fair ever again. <laughs> Just they've been damaged that badly. They'll stay on their planet. They won't go anywhere. They, we blew up every single possible space rocket to never go back into space. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. We got the power. We'll try. We have the fear. I certainly try. We got, we got, yeah. They got the fear in them. They won't try ever again. <laughs> it's like fair enough. <laughs> space scary. <laughs> Leave it alone. That's why we have these. That's why we all these nukes for. I know right now. To, to blow up what? Us? <laughs> it's definitely not for space. <laughs> Just in case. You can't even pretend like it's for space. Honestly, <laughs> got enough uh, nukes to blow up. The, you, you could probably pretend like it's for space, right? Because it's enough to blow up the Earth multiple times. And you're like, well, why do we need that? But you'd think after we got enough to blow up it once, we'd be like, eh, you can stop. Like, <laughs> I think I might be wrong. It's like 13 times over. Yeah, no, it's yeah, the fact that it's multiple times is, over, is the yeah. problem. Because it's like, you'd get to one, and you'd think you'd be like, we don't really need to make any more. If we could just destroy nah, I mean, all of us, like... No, the fact that we made more, and the fact that other countries have made more... Because um, I have more nukes worse. than you. Okay, cool. Like, after we all die, I'm so glad you have extra nukes to, to use on the nothing that exists. No, the <laughs> fact that mutual assured destruction is the only reason why we haven't done it to the, ourselves fully yet, though I'm pretty sure someone's going to be dumb enough can to Can we just agree at some point to just be like, fuck it? Like, can we just rewrite or, like, make another convention to just be like, fuck it, the nukes aren't worth it, man. It's just not. <laughs> do, you, do you really think that Geneva Conventions fully worked? Nope. Well, no. I'm just like, can we have a convention now that's like... Just fuck it. The no just disarm the nukes. It's not worth it. It's just not worth it. I mean, people have been disarming the nukes, but the reason why we some countries have participated but not have fully disarmed it is because other people still have it. Because so you want to have a up... gun to someone else's head. But uh, then the thing is, it's like, yeah. hey, man, like, if we just have a gun to the world, it just doesn't help anybody. Like, if you wanted to rule the world and then we destroyed it, like, what is there to rule? <laughs> like. Just, no, people, some people just want to be on top, man. That's how it it's is. Like, I have to have the gun is. planted at the Earth. It was like, but, but why? In case the Earth fights I mean, back. Duh. War is the only <laughs> thing. Uh, <laughs> war is the only thing. Case. War, war is, is just pretty much means uh, the other guy has a bigger stick. That's it. I mean, that yeah. is absolutely it. That is, that is facts. <laughs> Biggest we stick. gotta get to the point where we have robot. No, no we don't. Nah, it makes it worse, Amaya. Robot yeah, soldiers makes it, makes it way worse, because then we could just put them on a production line, so then there's no real, like, moral End. quarry about it, right? It's just like, oh, <laughs> We have a billion robots. Every, no, it'll be, a, exactly. it'll, be a, no, it'll be a war of resources, because whoever runs out of robots first. And even then, like, uh, since the most... Especially if we make them too smart, then we're fucked. Bro, the war between robots. Well, no, it doesn't even have to be smart. It could just be piloted, honestly. You don't have to make them AI robots. You just make them I robots that are fast and strong enough to be piloted by and durable. other people. Yeah, and durable enough. Hey, it doesn't even have to be durable. They can make it out of cheap material for all we care. They're dispensable. You can just make them again. <laughs> Grab those parts, slap them back together. Recycle. But, like, if anything else, the materials, so it's finite. Make them out of wood. Yeah. That's, it ends up being a war about resources, but then again, that's most wars. Mm, that's true. You gotta make them elite titans. <laughs> 
But, um, Full on Titan suits, but go ahead, Mike. Yeah, or Titan suits. Um, Titan suits. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'll go about my my um. Your pretty year. All right, so check it. Um, I was playing this game called uh, Resistance Twenty Forty X. We talked about it before and how it's like basically the evolution of Nidhogg. Um, I stand by that. It's actually really cool. It's like hyper Nidhogg. Actually, Dave and I kind of want to play it with you and Pele actually at some point whenever I get the chance. I okay. challenged. <laughs> he's he's a punk. Duh. Damn it! I'm gonna bleep that. <laughs> <laughs> Slack you. Don't worry, folks. You'll meet him one day. You might regret it though. <laughs> For sure. One but day. I'm gonna keep that in mind. I got the I got the timestamp, so no worries. But <laughs> oh, this one actually has moves, full on moves. Yeah, it has full on fighting. Well, not full on fighting game moves. Yeah, actually, kind of sorta, because they have charge moves and uh, uppercuts and things like that. It's it has a full move set. Um, yeah. Granted, Nidhogg had its own like move set, right? But like this one has Even though, individual characters was, like, have special things, m- right? Most moves, yeah, because Nidhogg was like very simplified in terms of move set. Uh, this one, like you pick up, you pick a character and it has its own specific move set you can do against the other. It looks, it looks dope. It is really cool. I will say, from what I played, because the the beta is out right now, play it, mess around with it. It is a little you stiff. You have to request access. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is a little stiff, but it works really well. Like every the mechanically, when you're fighting other people, it's perfect. But I do feel like movement, as far as like jumping around and stuff like that, a little stiff, right? Yeah. Could just be because it's, of it, how I was using it. And it's since it's fo- yeah. combo, combo focus, one strike is not going to be enough to end them. You oh, yeah. Them you have to do, like, I think it's like a three. You have multiple exchanges of hitting them, but um, mm-hmm. it doesn't take long. And actually, the fun fact about the uh, the game itself is that in the beginning, it takes maybe two hits, right, to deal with your opponent. But the more your opponent dies, the more health they get when they come back, but also the longer it takes for them to come back. So um as it continues they have more chances to beat you and it's the same way back and forth that's how you get the a proper like fight back and forth and if you guys are evenly matched by the end of the match you both have like a significant amount of like pips that you can use that as at your disposal you can take multiple hits but you're trying to pretty much get the first person to get a full combo basically is the one that wins usually unless you have unless you're like I said, towards the end, and maybe you could probably string something together properly if you know what you're doing um, that can one-tap somebody, but it kind of becomes smaller exchanges of footsies, which is kind of fun. If you like footsies, it's pretty much... And that's pretty much what Nidhogg was, right? It's just footsies the game. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's super fun. I love its art style, too. It is the weirdest... Gotta be the weirdest game that I've seen in a minute, hmm. because the story talks about, like, this... um. The initial story is a pretty much about like this drab world that's on the brink of destruction, and then they go and they put on the headset and they go into this other world where they can win this tournament that allowed them to fight back in the real world, um, because they'll be able to get like uh they're granted like a, a singular wish, something of that nature for like this tournament that's basically Ready Player One when you dunk on the helmet, <laughs> and I'm looking at it being like, all right. <laughs> that's kind of cool not ex- not what I was expecting from this game when I looked at it like you see the art style as you're looking at it Pele. you're like yeah I wasn't expecting this to be virtual world on the brink of collapse in the real world <laughs> kind of situation <laughs> it's super cool though I definitely recommend giving it a shot it's fun um, like we said the beta's out go ahead and request access get in there give it a test okay, okay. see if you like it um, I'm still playing No More Heroes 3 that's still fun. Enjoying the wacky zaniness of that. Getting further in it. Um, I think I'm at six. I'm at the six boss in that game. Well, I'm at rank six, not the six boss. I'm at rank six. So I'm going to keep pushing. I'm almost halfway through the game. So that's fun. Um, what else we got? We've been playing a lot of Stolen Realms lately. lately. Uh, that's been a, a fun time. Fun started it. Decent game. Yes. This is a role playing game. Um, what's the max level? Don't know. We have don't not know reached yet. it. Hmm. Interesting. Genuinely have yeah. not reached it yet. Interesting. We're assuming that you just go up until you reach the. Um, I guess we have to put on the hardest difficulty to see what it might be. Like, the potentially what it might be. And because, like, your characters kind of carry through each of the difficulties. 
So, um, I think classic is usually like five to eight, if I'm not mistaken, to as far as levels go. And then, uh, I think the one before that is like, e each difficulty, like, brings up the missions to a certain level range, pretty much, is what I understand about it. And then there's hardcore, which is like, if that, if the team wipes, they're dead. <laughs> they're gone. Permadeath. Oh my god. Like, you lose your character? Yeah, yeah you could, you could lose it if you turn it on, though. It's specific so like you have to you can put it on a certain difficulty and then actually you can put it on any difficulty but there's a little mm -hmm. pip when you're creating them that if you click it it turns on hardcore mode and it says this character specifically if they die in a full party wipe they're, they're dead like they're gone gone and i was like oh okay keep that in mind um that's no good permadeath man it's kind of it's kind of fun though yeah we started playing with it uh pele Aaron and me started doing a little bit of one with that pretty much happening. Um, it was kind of, it was interesting. It's just a little bit more tenser because you're looking at it going like, all right. I'll see if I waste my time on want this character. anyone to die. <laughs> so I mean, have if you, to no, be just careful. Don't set it to, yeah, just don't set it to hardcore mode if that's what you don't want to do. Pretty much, like, yeah. You can, yeah, you don't have to do it. But like, like, yeah, no if your you. character dies, uh, Devon, like, it'll be straight as long as you don't set you don't mm -hmm. click the little pit, right? I will not. Straight. Not yet. <laughs> He's like, I like my character. <laughs> Just get this guy. Um, I'm really enjoying it. For an early access game, it's actually pretty, like, fleshed out so far. I'm really enjoying it. I'm kind of hoping for maybe a couple more classes, maybe some more abilities, you know. They're probably going to do some balance changes, but I just want some more freedom, pretty much as the deal. Want to see what else they might add, see if they add any more, um trees or anything like that because it's still in early access there's probably still adding world and stuff i know they just had an update that we haven't actually gotten a chance to see in any of our gameplay but there's like a whole biome that we haven't touched that involves like mushrooms and stuff like that that i don't think we've been mm -hmm. on a single mission to yet <laughs> so that's gonna be kind of fun um it's just really just a fun dn like it's it's a crpg but it's like done it's straight up just kind of done to dragons pretty much but on your computer just, I think, Bailey, you said one of the things you wanted to add was, like, races. Like, ra yeah, character, with certain like ra yeah. character races. I think that would be really Character cool being racist. What? <laughs> nah, like, elves <laughs> I and, know. Uh, I was... like, dwarves and stuff. When you say... Or at the very least, like, be, like, a red guard yeah, or I make wanna, their own. I want to place I want to place other things instead of, you know, human. That's fair. They can just make their own races. They don't even have to do the like, classic fantasy ones. They can just do stuff like... Yeah, of course. Like a red guard. I'm just using Skyrim, yeah. for instance. It's like, it's a red guard and, like, a Khajiit. It's something yeah, just you know different. non non human please is all I would like to request. Can I be a golem? Or not? I want to be a golem. Let me be a rock monster. Huh. But like different classes, like a rogue rock monster. <laughs> a rogue rock monster. <laughs> but yeah, for sure, stolen realms is super cool. Definitely get into it. Um, I think that's pretty much it for me though, because I don't have a ton that I was doing, uh, or at least anything that I was. Oh wait, I forgot one. I watched Creed two. <laughs> Creed 3? I did forget. I like it. Creed, Creed 2. 2. He said, I, I'm catching up so I can watch Creed 2. Okay, okay. I just so like it. Creed, Creed 2 was fire. <laughs> um, I'm debating on whether or not I like it more or less than the first movie. Um, I think that... Because like, Creed 2 faces the idea of him dealing with uh, the son of his father's like killer murderer, pretty much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if he dies, he dies, yeah. <laughs> um... And so the idea is that Adonis is dealing with, you know, the pretty much he's being faced with the same situation his father was faced in, except everyone around him is like, this man can kill you. That is how your dad died. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah so especially sure. since, you know, Vic, uh, Victor Dravo is, what, a good foot taller than Adonis? Oh, dude, and... bro, that was the number one thing I saw this. I was looking at it and was like, bro... These two people wouldn't even be in the same ring any other time. Oh, no. This doesn't make any <laughs> sense. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, you could like this match. Genuinely, the match in this film is like the most irresponsible match I've ever seen. And then, <laughs> oh, no, because this is not for a title. If it was for a title, it would be based on weight. Now, this is mainly the spectacle fight through. No, through. but that's the thing. He can lose the title in this match. That's kind of the whole. Which makes no sense. Yeah. Not only can he lose the title, but like. On top of him almost dying in that first match, you watch the rest of the world start talking mad joke about him. Like, 
be <laughs> not showing up and everything like that. He's like, hey man, where you where you go? You gonna you gonna punk out as the as the champ? And it's like, punk out. That man's not even in his weight class. He almost killed him. <laughs> Are we bugging? <laughs> like, do you we want to see someone else die again? You won't fight Bigfoot? What the fuck wrong with you, bro? You, you scared for your life, bitch ass. He's a look at you scared for your life. Even though you out here having a kid and everything and moving forward. Nah, scared for your life. <laughs> um, I do recommend going to see it. It's just, there. you know what, I, what it is? Um, I like the setup for Creed to a lot like a lot of what the core plot is based around is really interesting but there are obvious parts of the world that you look at and go like that doesn't make any sense (laughs) and it's not like a it's a plot hole thing it's like more of a a world thing where you're looking at it going like people want you to die clearly like (laughs) (laughs) oh so here's the thing like so that aspect uh, i will mention this somebody so that feeling you have like you're uh, unbelievability in certain parts of the world that's pretty common in the rocky series mm. that's definitely going to be a common thing you're going to see in the third in the third, in the third one well, okay that's fair but like i guess the best way i can say it is just like because the first one was very believable right they did everything kind of by the books um everything flows properly there's nothing in the first the first one's like really solid in that fact of like everything just kind of makes sense like there's nothing about it that's a little strange not that i could tell right there's like um, character motivations make sense. Every, the world yeah. makes sense. For, for what's instance, happening. like the final fight in the first film, uh, uh, when he uh, when uh, Adonis is fighting pretty Rick, uh, pretty Ricky Collin, mm-hmm. that was not for a title fight. That was a spectacle fight. Yeah, the entire idea was that he was just I want to fight this new guy who is the son of the, the son of Creed. Yeah, one of the greatest boxers of all so time. Yeah. I want to fight him, and everybody was like, fair enough, right? In this one, they keep challenging him like as a champion because he's like, oh no, nah, he'd suck if he doesn't come out. But I'm like, bro, you're not even in his weight class. Like, you're way up, you're punching way below your your average right now for him. They even say it in the film that like, um, mm-hmm. he looks because his, Adonis, yeah, his dad. Adonis is like, yeah, his Adonis is like 180, and um, Victor is probably like 210. Yeah, he looks at him. He's like much smaller than your father, and he's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he is. Do you see your son? He's huge. <laughs> oh, so also, Molly, do you recognize Victor Creed? Uh, Victor uh, Victor um, Drago, the actor who plays him? Oh, no, I don't, I don't. Knife Hand. Oh, wait, did I? Yeah, it is. I didn't even catch that. Mm-hmm. From uh, Shang-Chi. Yeah. Shang- yep. That's, that's fire. I like huh. that. <laughs> I did not catch that originally. But, yeah, it was a fun movie. I enjoyed it. It was, it was a vibe, honestly. Um, I think I'll still like the third one. I just have more, like I said it before, I still have problems with it uh, at times, but I, I still enjoyed it for what it is. Um, yeah, I would say so. Mm-hmm. But it's... oh, and next week, uh, yeah. a bunch of us are gonna go see John Wick Four. That is true. I am. Damn. I guess it's gonna lead right into the news. Um, yeah, we're Whoa. very excited for John Wick Two and. Four. Four, right? Because this is the fourth yeah. one in the series. My bad, I said two. Um, but I I think we have to address the fact that we have lost a man, the great actor. legend. A great actor. Lance Reddick. Lance Reddick is gone. He has uh, passed. Uh, sad. sad Very news. sad. I did not know he was 60 years old. He did not look it. He doesn't, but I did know he was 60 years old. But yeah, he does, you're, that is not wrong. He does not really look it. He looked good. For his age, which is why it's a little like shocking for everyone involved to be like. I was just, I was just cooking pizza and Dan just pulls up because he was slow and he's like, "Yo, he died!" Like, wait, what? Wait, is that? Oh, fuck, Dan. Yeah, it it sucks because in terms of like he was a great, he loved him a lot of great performances, but from John Wick, uh, The Wire, um, and a, a bunch of other things, uh, especially with uh, he's a villain from a conclave for. Uh, Legend of Vox Machina. Mm-hmm. He's currently the voice of Hellboy in the next Hellboy game. Mm-hmm. He's also which, and Commanders of all of Destiny. Mm-hmm. Destiny. Commanders of all of Destiny. Yeah, so a lot of fans have been giving tribute to Destiny as uh, right now by uh, pretty much saluting him uh, on his current site. Hopefully yeah, um, Bungie I gives him a that. proper send-off afterwards for this stuff. I would hope they would, which is going to be interesting. They're going to have to rewrite whatever they were moving towards because, I mean, let's be real. No one's yeah. all coming. Um, do you have anything mm-hmm. about what it was was it just simply old age it said natural causes mm-hmm. 
Uh, even then, like, 60, like, I know that's a fairly old age for it, but even then, like... 60 is still kind think... of young. It's still just, kind of young. Yeah. I wouldn't say, like, ancient. I wouldn't say it's ancient. Yes, it's up there, but I've seen people uh, live for much longer um, for, like, 60 years. I wouldn't say, like, close to dying of, no. like, old age. Yeah, both my I uncles really are in their 60s right now. Like, yeah. our, 60s is just Our really president's 80. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, I would say, like, natural causes would be... I would, okay... I'm not saying it was natural causes. He probably had like a weak heart or something like that. I'm not too, not exactly certain, but still, like I wouldn't really put sixty as like death of like from old age if that is the case. Yeah, it's just. Well, I mean, I guess that's pretty much what happened to him. But like, it's just not really an age you associate with just your body just oh, giving out in that old, way. Yeah. 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 So it's just it's unfortunate to hear um, our condolences to the family. Obviously. Um, for sure, they lost a great man, a great performer. It sucks. It does. Um, it really does. I. What did? What do we think his last performance is actually? Because we, I don't know in, if we know. In film, well, we're gonna see his. We're gonna see his uh, next performance in John Wick. In terms of in terms of film, I have no idea. In terms of video games, I want to say it will be the Hellboy project. I would assume it was the Hellboy project. If they're yeah. done, assuming that they're done, they are done, right? With that. With him, I don't know. Yeah, that's... the game obviously is not done, but but I'm just wondering if like he recorded all of his lines or anything like that. Because if that's the case, the Hellboy game will be the last time we hear of him. We're just losing a bunch of greats. We lost Kevin Conroy not too long ago. Obviously, uh, it's just, man, it's just yeah. a lot. <laughs> it's just wow. Um, and the fact that it's like even hurts even more because Kevin Conroy's last video game appearance for Batman will be in the Suicide Squad game. Yeah, that's what sucks. And that's a whole different. Game that's a Arms yeah. Like. Unfortunately, that game is going through a lot of problems, but I think the story isn't going to be. It's. I'm hoping that the story is not going to be at this point. Like I'm. Um, I really hope not. If it is, we will... what the fuck, Rocksteady? It is a really strange game to by default, but I'm kind of looking forward to the story at least. I'm not. Granted, here's the thing. I would play the game as is, genuinely, because I. I like my fast-paced third-person shooters. I have you dashing around and doing a bunch of crazy stuff, right? But mm -hmm. I think we can all agree that, like, we would have preferred a game that just involved de using the characters that we're using more, right? <laughs> like, just yep. more uniqueness about it. I'm playing Kick Shark. Why do I feel like I'm just playing a, any other, like, third-person shooter? Well, not any other, but, like... Just a hyper action third person shooter. Yeah, you have I'm four King Shark. unique characters. <laughs> right? Yeah, you have four unique characters. You have King Shark, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, and Harley Quinn. Um, Deadshot, I expect to be a shooter because he's the goddamn fucking shooter. That's his character. That is, that is what he would that. do. Like, if anyone Harley should with a play revolver. like that, yeah. him. <laughs> yes. Harley with a revolver, one gun, fine. But she has to focus on some melee because she wields a baseball bat or a giant hammer a lot of time. <laughs> Captain Boomerang, play with his fucking name. His name is Captain fucking Boomerang. Make him use a fucking boomerang. For God's <laughs> sake. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just... And King Shark, he is a motherfucker shark. Make him swim <laughs> through the fucking my road. Shark. Motherfucker shark. You motherfucker shark. Make him eat people. Make him slam down. Make him swim through the road and up the building like a fucking shark. It would be cool. It what would be cool. What type of sharks have you been seeing? I mean, he's a superpower shark, so it kind of works. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Going through buildings. You know, it'll be cool to see uh, his traversal. Instead of climbing, he swims through it. That'd be awesome to close his fucking eyes. Yeah. But no, it's like, let's see. But they are, after a recent report, after the delay, they're still not getting rid of the live service elements like of it. Then why the fuck are you delaying it then? That That is the question, right? <laughs> like, what is wrong with it that you found beyond what we found that you're delaying it again? I guess there's just uh, stuff that but... they just wasn't able... See, if they're not taking out that aspect, maybe they're just reworking some of the stuff. Because like... mm -hmm. that's, that's the two things that we were hoping for. So, we were hoping they would take out the like games as a service elements. If they're not going to do that, I, c I can only assume that the thing that they're working on or addressing is the core gameplay for everyone in the game. Right? It's the only thing mm -hmm. I could assume. <laughs> because if you're not doing that, <laughs> then why? <laughs> like, why are we even bothering? You could have you could have actually released it to as is, maybe, right? Upon release date, and like 
we would have just played whatever that finished product is, and maybe it would have probably flopped. Honestly, all things considered, because people were not happy about what the gameplay looked at looked like. But you know, it also just kind of makes me kind of sad because I'm like, I feel like that kind of game is an interesting one on its own had it not been dealing with these specific characters. Or if anything, you could have chose Suicide Squad characters. Granted, you know, it's kind of weird to have a Suicide Squad without Harley Quinn, right? But, because yeah. she's like kind know. of the face of that now. Um, her and Deadshot pretty much are the two. Um, but like, you could have chose characters that would be more befitting of that if you wanted to, you know? You could have done like this... Because the Suicide Squad roster is a lot of villains, you could have gone a different route entirely. Yeah, you could have chose, like, just... If you wanted to make it like this, you could have just chose characters that would fit that profile with us. Like, you could still could have probably had Harley Quinn, and you still could have had Deadshot, you also could have had Deathstroke, or just someone else. Like, obviously, when you have two huge standouts, like King Shark and fucking Captain Boomerang, and they don't play like they're supposed to, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> hmm. I don't know how to make it <laughs> I'm trying to think of who else they could have used. Oh, literally they could duh, they could have used Bloodsport. They just showed him off actually. <laughs> People kind of like Bloodsport I mean, and Peacemaker. Yeah. That would have been it. Peacemaker would have been cool. <laughs> Peacemaker would have been cool. Um, they they had Katana at one point. They used Black Mass, uh, Quad King. That's weird. Dang. Vixen apparently was one once upon a time. Yeah, they wanted. they captured Vixen and made her do it. It was weird because Vixen's a hero. That's why it's so weird that she was like a villain. It, hmm. it was. Well, she wasn't a villain, but she was on the squad. Suicide Squad's weird. They just grab anybody they can sometimes. Connor Kent was on the Suicide Squad at one point. It's like, actually, recently. Penguin was on the Suicide Squad. What? I don't even know what the Penguin was supposed to do on the Suicide Squad. He was vibing. I guess that's the whole deal, right? Like, that's the deal with the Suicide Squad. He they was just a grab funny a bunch character. of people and go like, hey, yeah, do Oh, thing. Speedy was on the Suicide Squad. I was Speedy on the Suicide Squad. Actually, I do know why Speedy was on the Suicide Squad. That's fair. <laughs> Speedy was Speedy was up to some stuff. <laughs> Okay, Arsenal. That's true. That's fair. Black Adam, not surprised. I, I think that would be overkill if Black Adam was on the Suicide Squad. I think Red Hood. Well, no, yeah, Black Adam was on the Suicide Squad before, I think. It, it was. I think that's overkill now, comparatively. Yeah, it depends on what you're fighting. <laughs> yeah, Considering that's... what they're fighting in this. Well, actually, yeah. The, actually, no, it would not be overkill for the Suicide Squad since they're fighting the fucking Justice League. Yeah, it's like, hey, yo, we need something to deal with Superman. Black mm. Adam. <laughs> that's it. I'm going to deal with the Flash. Black Adam could also deal with that. <laughs> yep. Uh, Parasite could deal with Superman easy. KG, KG Beast. Uh, That's another one they could have put on the team. <laughs> what, Solomon Grundy would be easy. You can't kill Solomon what, Grundy. But you can't what about Arkham Grundy. Batman? Put Arkham, Arkham Batman on the, <laughs> on the <laughs> Suicide Squad? No, yeah, fight, no, I don't no. think Batman would stand for that. <laughs> oh, they're, they're fighting him. Okay, this is a weird one. Etrigan the Brainiac 666. Huh. Was that like a hybrid between Brainiac and Etrigan? And yeah, an alternate Etrigan from another reality where he's merged with Brainiac. That sounds dope. That also sounds extremely scary, but that sounds dope. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. I like that. That's 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 interesting, and I never heard of that combination before. But all right, let's um let's find some other things in here because we have quite a bit of the docket to go through, and uh, mm -hmm. we have plenty of time. But, you know, same time, mm -hmm. let's find some things. What do we want to talk about? Actually, yeah, well, I know exactly what I want to talk about. I have to mention this. Yo, Hyperlight Breakers. <laughs> it looks dope. I, okay, so we talked about it getting announced before, because obviously I've talked about how I'm a huge fan of uh, Hyperlight Drifter. That game was sick. Did not get the impression that everybody was like weird blue alien people. Actually, that's not true. I knew they were blue. I just didn't know that they were like they had tails. I don't want to say furry bait. They're too cool to be furry bait. But, you know, I didn't know that they were this animalistic. I guess I was about to, they have a lot of animalistic features that I just wasn't expecting. But hmm. it's cool to see it be translated over to uh, 3D from like the 2D uh, isometric game that it was, action game that it was, to this. It looks great. It looks amazing, honestly. Um, hoping to get a chance to touch this very, very soon. Actually, does this have a does that have a release date on this? I'm not sure. Early access, fall twenty three. 
Yeah, uh, that the, works. Yeah, this game is um seizure warning. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, Hyperline Drifter is, has always been kind of like that. I just like to see them dive into another world. Um, after their last game, uh, I guess this was their test. Their last game was um, Solar Ash. Right, yeah, Solar Ash. The full name was Solar Ash Kingdom, but I guess they changed it just to Solar Ash for some reason. Um, that game was fire. I love that game. I actually really want to go back through that again at some point. Um, but that was fun, and obviously it kind of served as a test for clearly this game. So I can't wait to see it. It's basically kind of going to be like a 3D Dark Souls with like guns and stuff. It's fire, <laughs> honestly, straight fire. Uh, what's another thing you guys want to mention? We'll go in there. Uh, Ooh, Atlas so, Fallen. Another cool looking Yeah! That was, Atlas Fallen looks dope. Yeah. I was looking, I was like, what the? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Atlas Fallen. <laughs> okay. First off, this reminds me of um, White Sands, which is a Brandon Sanders' book in which they used sand almost, exact, almost exactly like they use in this. Hmm. Um, so right off the bat the idea that your characters are sand bending uh superhumans that kind of remind me of a mix of darksiders and like it's like darksiders with like some other form like i guess it kind of reminds me of dragon age actually with how it looks a little bit like in, uh, inquisition specifically mm-hmm. it reminds mm-hmm. me of like a bit of a mix between that i'm looking at that being like this is kind of this is speaking to me and everyone's using sand mm-hmm. and stuff like that to do attacks. You get a cool, crazy super gauntlet. <laughs> and it's it's looking kind of sick. Uh, based off a lot of early impressions, a lot of people seem to be liking the game. And the combo system is weird. So they have some fun and interesting gameplay stuff that's in here. Um, so, it is a character... Well, it's technically an action RPG is what it classifies. But after mm-hmm. seeing some of the stuff, it's, it's really leaning towards that character action. Uh, feel it's not there quite yet because of some of the little things that they decided to tweak about it and so i feel like it's a little limiting in some instances but it's also like kind of interesting but they have this thing known as the momentum gauge which is all about being aggressive towards enemies but by being aggressive in this form okay so as your momentum gauge goes up you gain access to new moves right and abilities as you fight but in doing so, you also make yourself more vulnerable to attacks when doing it because you take more damage when it's like that. It's like the idea of going in, but then like overextending yourself. So like, imagine like if, I mean, pretty much it's, it's like a stamina system, but you don't get tired, right? Like you're not, the idea is that your character doesn't get physically tired and just stops moving. You know what I mean? It's just like you are being too aggressive, you're going too hard and your body just kind of starts to give out in a way where if you start taking damage you're taking way more damage than you would had you kind of paced yourself out you know what i mean and i feel like that's kind of an interesting way of going about it i'm really intrigued by what they're doing with that Uh, i want to see how it plays out but alice is falling looks crazy i'm kind of glad we finally got to get play for it i'm not gonna front what's another one we want to look at guys uh let's see i want to talk about um uh straight uh oh battle crush actually battle crush looks dope oh yeah battle crush so battle crush is a battle brawler essentially a fighter a fighter game similar to what we play with divine knockout but instead of full 3d uh, third person uh, over the ca- over the shoulder camera. This is an isometric camera angle played with a breaking background as you fight each other with Greek and Roman uh, gods. It looks fun, not gonna lie. <laughs> it looks really Lord. fun. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> League of Legends. Yeah, cool it looks, it's cute. Uh, it's like chibi design, but a cool um, combo mechanics along with it. Knock people off the stage as the platforms are breaking apart. Uh, it looks it looks just pretty cool, like Last Man on the Hill type of style game, fighter game. It definitely looks like a fun time. Um, I'm looking forward to even messing around with it whenever it, we get the chance. Honestly, if we get the chance to, I'm trying to. I mean, I like games like this pretty much. It's kind of like just. Mm-hmm. It's not exactly Smash, right? But it's kind of it, it invokes that same kind of feeling, of like Smash and Power Stone. I need a Power Stone game. 
but like <laughs> <laughs> but like smash and power stone and things of that nature where it's just like yeah there are games that like kind of are lost by the wayside giga bash is like this too right um mm-hmm. there's just some game some like arena fighters that are lost by the wayside and they kind of get um overwhelmed with the idea of like already existing fighting games and stuff like that that exist like real like um, arcade mm-hmm. style fighting games right and then it also gets lost with the stuff like um well the anime fighters like the anime uh arena fighters like um naruto for instance like uh, the naruto storm series or um the demon slayers or uh the my heroes one justice or yeah, technically dragon ball tenkaichi right like <laughs> um stuff like this just kind of gets dropped by the wayside and there's like an entire genre that's like in the middle that's just kind of being lost and it's kind of just nice to see other games try to pick it up to be honest uh what is another one we got uh meet your uh, maker oh yeah you guys did want to talk about that one it, go it, for it. it it looks like a fun like uh what was gonna say a doom uh a maze maker and, oh yeah because you get to make your own levels and dungeons and stuff mm-hmm, like that. And and he, yeah meet your maker looks really mm-hmm, cool and you get, I like to see how crazy like other players. Uh, set, yeah, set yeah, up that's other how. That's how I love about that. The how community much... games like this that you can make because people be going crazy with stuff like this. Like fuck this up <laughs> because I remember when Mario Maker came on the Switch, people were ripping their hairs out. Some community made levels. It was insane. <laughs> mm-hmm. Best type of game just to make your community do it for you. <laughs> it's could be cool, especially since like if you have the player who uh, masters the game incredibly so mechanically wise on the um attacker side like yeah they could easily beat through this like i was like why we can't we beat this man <laughs> why are you like this um another one i guess i'll mention since it's on our list um i guess we kind of already knew this but i'll say that like tom holland is out here teasing that his spider-man will be showing up in uh spider-verse, Spider-verse. Spider-verse. i mean i wouldn't be surprised at this point i think we all kind of knew we were gonna get the three of them at some point right mm-hmm. in that, those films mm-hmm. it just kind of made sense so with him teasing it we're kind of looking forward to that um i guess i'll mention quickly i mentioned the dragon balls universe 2 uh free update that's coming out we're getting orange piccolo Woo! orange piccolo i think the gammas are already in the game so i mean i think that dlc already dropped but the free one is seemingly orange piccolo and um so max has a raid a raid boss, which that's fun, mm-hmm. right? With a mystery character adding in, which I'm guessing is gonna be Gohan. It beast. better be Gohan Beast. What are they doing? If it's not, <laughs> they don't add Gohan Beast. I'm gonna be very confused. <laughs> but Orange Piccolo looks sick. Good to see that the boy Piccolo getting love out here. Was looking at some stuff about how like he actually got the transformation and how everything works, and um, that's a complete character now. That also means that Piccolo's probably not getting another form, but that is a complete character now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> his, his journey is done. <laughs> I was like, but I look forward to seeing Piccolo probably beat the crap out of things. And uh, if I ever jump back into this universe 2 at some point, I'm trying to get some of those moves, because he got some fun ones in there. He got some fun ones. What's another one, guys? What's another thing? What's another one? Another? Th- oh, God. Oh, the Blackberry official trailer. That's pretty funny. Yeah. If it... Yep, they're making, uh, looks like they're making a movie of a creation and uh, dramatic fall of Blackberry, the world's f- first real smartphone. True. I remember, I remember Blackberries were everywhere once upon a time. Yeah, they were kind of the phone to get for a good minute. Mm-hmm. Around Razor mm-hmm. time. They even had like a little mouse. And they even had a, a keyboard. They had yeah, they the had the keyboard. They had the full... It was a vibe. Unfortunately. Those things were a little fun, and then the iPhone came out, and everyone got blown the fuck away. Yeah, we yeah. Th- again. We, we thought that was top tier technology. It was not. The BlackBerry was like, doing it though. It was trying. I mean, once upon a time, like in ter- if, if, for games, the game, video games, people thought Pong was the pinnacle of technology for video games. That is true. That is very true. What's another one? Let's see. Uh, I'm actually kind of excited to see Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I ain't go front. It looks fun. <laughs> it looks fun. It looks it looks genuinely fun. It's doing its best to play around with like certain ideas that we're usually used to, and I think it's doing a cool thing. Um, animation wise, I think it's having fun with its animation style. 
but I don't think it's doing anything. It's not Puss in Boots, right? Like, it's not doing that. <laughs> but it looks like it's going to be a cool, like a fun time, honestly. Yeah, it could be a cool story. It could be a cool, like, design choice in terms of animation, I, I believe, uh, to go along with it. Uh, hopefully, this it does really well uh, for it, because DreamWorks has been pretty much crushing it for a bit now. Genuinely. Um, let me see. I guess one of the things I also want to mention. Oh, yeah. Let's um let's talk about how because I feel like we gotta mention some stuff about some comics every so often. Um, so in DC Comics, the Justice League is technically uh, no more. The premier superhero team, the one that will be leading the world and saving the people from now on, are Titans. the Titans. Yeah, the Titans have well, no, not. No longer teens. No, they're no longer teens, and they're now the premier. They haven't been team. teens in a good while, though. True. I gotta say, but um, being led by Dick Grayson, uh, pretty much we're getting Starfire, Cyborg, Raven, and Beast Boy, uh, and Donna Troy, of course, because you can't forget her about her and uh, Wally West Flash, I believe. Um, everyone's coming together, and this is the new premier superhero team. This is going to be replacing the Justice League, and in my opinion. What a great team to replace the Justice League, technically speaking. Like, it doesn't mean that we're not going to get Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and all of them. They're still going to be out there and yeah. doing their thing. But the idea is that the Titans are going to be the lead team moving forward. There is no more Justice League for, I mean, we'll see how long this lasts. I'm kind of hoping this is a permanent change for a while. Because DC uh, seems to be a little bit less afraid. They they're, have problems with circular storytelling, but that's just comics in general. But they seem to be a little bit less afraid of changing the status quo. You know what I mean? Like, just genuinely mm-hmm. being like, hey, look, these characters deserve it. They're going to be in the spotlight for now. This is the move. So I hope to see more about that, honestly. Um, it's one of my favorite superheroes just in general. So I'm kind of kind of looking forward to seeing him step into a role that is greater than Batman. <laughs> this is the best way I can say that. And seeing he everyone the- else follow that kind of example. <laughs> Yeah, he is the uh, first Robin to lead his own team, and he's led multiple teams over the years too. He's also the most mm. trusted superhero in like all of DC. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? That's... And the greatest ass. That too does have that. <laughs> um, what's another thing we should mention, guys? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, did I have one? I'm thinking. Let me look real quick. You got it. You got one? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, Gunhead. Gunhead looks uh, pretty fu- pretty fun. So what Gunhead is is a uh, spaceship mech flying game, but it's more of a heist thing. So you have these procedurally generated uh, essentially uh, ships. You invade through different entryways and pretty much go through security and defeat enemies as you go through trying to find the treasure and loot within these ships. All procedurally generated, so it's a different uh, outcome and challenge per uh, time you try it with a little kind of mech ship you fly around and shoot things. Uh, to get to the treasure, it's really unique. It's pix, it's blocky look for it. That explains the pixel generation. But I like the uh, aesthetic for it because, like, you can never make play the same type of heist twice. Essentially, mm, that is really cool. It gives a lot of different vibes on how you change out the gameplay, both both creation of your mech to uh, deal with a challenge or how to approach that challenge, depending on where you're entering in from the ship. It does seem like a fun time. We were looking at gameplay for it during this, and it's just kind of like, okay, I like it. It's a, it's a kind of a vibe. It's definitely something, like you said, a very unique idea, just for simply having the mech focus on it in the first place. And then on top of that, mm-hmm. the procedurally generated ships that you're, like you said, invading. <laughs> um, what about you, Devon? Did you find one? Uh, the movie Joyride looks like a fun movie with about two girls being best friends and then going to a crazy adventure. <laughs> How crazy are we talking about, though, is the question. <laughs> one girl's trying to find their birth mother in, uh, I think, China, and that's when things fall apart. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That makes sense. <laughs> that seems like that would be destined for uh, shenanigans. It's, yep. Uh, Asian main characters with a lot of Asian humor and relations that I got personally. <laughs> Especially when we've seen, like, uh, when, uh, the ado- when well, one of the Asian girls whose adopt parents were a uh, white couple... Uh, lean and hug and get celebrated. The other Asians like were confused, like what's going on? And her her do- their daughter response was white people. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I got that. That's, he's that's, like, I feel that's that. funny. I feel that. 
I guess that it's definitely an experience that I've I I've, I've gone through. <laughs> That's how you know. Sometimes things just hit you in your core, and you're like, yeah. Some people will just yeah. won't understand. <laughs> some people just, just yeah, won't you get just, it. You just have to. You just have to pretty much do that. I know that sounds a little racist, but it's just how upbringing was. <laughs> but um, I guess one that I want to mention. I mean, I guess I have to mention this one as well. Um, where is it? Straight lights, which uh, we mentioned it before on the oh, podcast. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. I was looking at yeah, this one yeah. looks crazy. This is right up my alley, obviously. Um, Dragon Ball Z fights. <laughs> Azura's Wrath uh, style like fights against like... These are like spirits, right? These are more like spirits. They're, spe- they're, they're spirits, like li- like black charcoal wooden uh, aspects with light uh, color t- colorations for it. But they just look dope in a melee fighter system. Especially it's this one scene where this massive thing is hitting the little... Our little main character, but he just block every single strike. He gets faster and faster and faster. Like ah. There's obviously this uh, switching mechanic, so you're supposed to bounce back and forth between like red and blue, uh, much like um, Outland or Ikaruga, uh, where mm-hmm. you're just constantly switching back and forth. And I, uh, but, I forgot I own that game. Yeah, Outland is fun, man. It's a weird. If people don't remember it, but it was a vibe. It was a good game. Um. Well, yeah, this one looks like a fun time. And on top of that, I think the uh, the demo is out. Yeah. So we had to download that. Going to give that a shot. Well, we get the opportunity. Um, Another one, another one, another one. I guess I should mention Dead Link. Um, it was one of the, the games that I played before. They recently decided to put out an update review for it. Dead Link is an early access game currently. That is basically a Doom, Doom Eternal uh, style game. Uh, roguelike. Cyberpunk roguelike. Yep. yep. Doom Eternal style cyberpunk roguelike. Which involves you basically doing the cycle that you would do in Doom Eternal to enemies all over the place while gaining new perks and stuff like that that increase your survivability rate. Um, it's a fun time. I love its art style so far. and Its aesthetic is a uh, nice time. Um, gameplay wise, it's pretty solid, honestly. Feels really tight, genuinely. So they definitely know what they're doing on this one. Um, the roguelike elements, the perks and stuff like that can use a bit of work. I just didn't see anything that was significantly, uh, super intriguing out of them, but I didn't put a ton of time into it either. So I'm hoping that as I play, I will unlock some stuff that are a bit more crazier, but, uh, there's nothing wrong with having subtler perks. It's just, you know, you're playing a sub, like a crazy cyberpunk game. You kind of think that you would get some things that are a bit more like bombastic in some instances mm-hmm. so we'll see how it turns out especially with this update might be putting some new stuff well they're obviously putting some new stuff in so we'll see how that plays out what else what else i would like to talk about uh world uh worldless oh yeah worldless. go for it it's hmm? world worldless for the looks of it looks like to be a kind of like a metroidvania style game with a hack with hack and slash capabilities of this very unique and kind of straight up beautiful world design for it because you're playing as a character in the shape of a humanoid uh, uh, body, but it's illustrated by just orbs of light and sticks surrounding it. It is really, really pretty. Very fucking pretty. We saw it so far. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. We saw it so far. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, this is the first time I've see, seen it for it, and it looks really cool. Oh, okay. uh, and I'm excited to see how that uh, game comes out in the future. You definitely keep an eye on just uh, the aesthetic alone intrigues me. Um, I definitely have to mention if I don't, I mean someone will kill me. Uh, Guilty Gear Strive. They have Bedman. Or I should say, Bedman? Mm-hmm. Bedman. <laughs> Bedman. Yeah. Bedman? Something like that. We actually have the because they actually put the question mark in there for his name. <laughs> Bedman? Is it Bedman? <laughs> you gotta have the inflection on it. It's Bedman, I guess. <laughs> but um, the idea is, and this is a fun fact about it, uh, we're playing as not the original Bedman, uh, but his little sister with the Bedman <laughs> attacking in the background. It's a fun little puppet character, a way of uh, reworking that character that's really interesting. Um, not gonna lie, though, the original version had some crazy stuff. Like this... Uh, rewind mechanic that's ridiculous it's a it's a cool one it's like a trap setup kind of thing that they would do where they would 
put like a little time slot and then have like a rewind echo after image that did stuff. The new one doesn't have any of that because Strive is a simpler game. It just doesn't have the crazier mechanics, but it is fun. Um, I like the idea that the bed is protecting her, even if she doesn't want to. It seems to be kind of out of control in that kind of way. Where she's like, I'm sorry, it's just doing what it wants. I've never seen it be this aggressive. Um, a lot of fun work putting put into the animations for this one. Um, I think Bedman might be a pretty cool character to check out when you get ready to play Guilty Gear Strive, especially this time around. So, be on the lookout for that. Anything else? Yeah, there was something. There was a movie I wanted to talk about. It was uh, what was it called? It was a grudge movie. Was, oh, beef. Yeah, beef. Yes, that looks like another funny movie. I I, I skimmed through it because I was scared to go tell what's happening, but it's, it looks funny. It looks a good watch. Mm-hmm. From the looks of it, it's like two unrelated characters, both of Asian descent. Um, very much like Too have much their worse. own problems and lives. They have a chance encounter apparently up over a car thing, and this pretty much been taking each other's peg down one by one as time mm-hmm. passes in a more eventual manner. Like this looks fun. I completely get it. And goddamn, it's just <laughs> just like fuck, just fuck. <laughs> just looks like a depressing mm-hmm. movie, but it looks funny. It is time. depressing because revenge can go this far. And um. I, and the thing is, I am an adv- advocate of vengeance, but like vengeance over petty stuff, I think is go- is go too far at times. <laughs> Let it be deserved. Let it be warranted. This seems, like you said, petty. Not really warranted. <laughs> <laughs> I get their lives have been kind of shit, but like this escalates too far over petty things. That's <laughs> all. Um, I want to mention uh, Vernal Edge. This one was a cool one. So um, we were talking about it a little bit. It looks like a Metroidvania. It was a 2D uh, side scroller, like hack and slash, pretty much, right? Yeah, um, it's a little bit like it's definitely a Metroidvania aspect with some apparently fishing mechanics. So it looks cool. Um, it's an you move FF7 around seven style world maneuvering when you get on the ship mm-hmm. and stuff. That looks fun. PlayStation yep. One graphics and everything was aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> Very aesthetically pleasing, kind of cutesy gameplay. Uh, animation looks like how t- your typical Metroidvania hack and slasher stuff like Strider, Hollow Knight, Blasphemous, uh, so on and so forth. But well, well animated and hopefully well controlled. Uh, we won't know until we're actually feeling, you know. Yeah, that kind of thing is just gotta feel through tactile functions. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess I don't know how the delay is because I know some of those do have a delay on jumping, attacking. You just gotta make that feel for it. It's that's how you approach a Souls like game because you need to know how it feels to play it because the delay is fine-tuned yeah but that one looks like a fun one though can't wait to check that one out uh this was the release trailer which means that it, i think it's releasing what's it releasing it's sometime in april i think the last time i checked yeah i think it's 20 is it 25th or is that I something else oh uh, no hold on uh let me just check yeah skip till it's the end that's usually uh 2023. Oh, it's out. It's out now on PS5. Even better. Go get it. (laughs) Go get it. (laughs) All right. Um, I guess we should probably mention this uh, Elden Ring uh, fiasco that's happening with uh, Bleak Faith. (laughs) So, Bleak Faith, a game that Amani mentioned in the last Mm -hmm. podcast episode that he's uh, been playing. For it, apparently the developers are now a bit under hot water for allegedly stealing animation files similar to that of, that of Elden Ring because a few movements and characters in the uh, during boss fights are almost frame for frame exactly the same as characters from Elden Ring. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, might be a bit. That's the accusation. The truth of the matter is actually is through Epic because apparently someone did steal those file animations from from software probably. Uh, uh, developer themselves, one of the employees, sold it on the Epic Games Store. The developers of Bleak Faith found found those and bought it for their game and used it. So they legal. bought it legally through Epic. Yeah. So, so in the end, in short, I don't blame developers of Bleak Faith because, again, 
how would you fucking fully know? You were just like, hey, man, I just yeah. wanted to use these animations. They look pretty good. Good, yeah. <laughs> and you can't, and I can't blame developers for, like, not handcraft animating everything because, let's face it, developing is hard. The people that did Blake Faith was a group of three. Um, That's a they lot had to, to go get through. Something. Yeah, they had yeah, to. Yeah, and plus, it. it's just some animations. Not everything was asset rip. Like, people are like, oh, it's asset rip. Not exactly. Some people just take assets. From other games, everything. Not every studio has handcrafted everything uh, from the games ground up. For instance, my favorite series of Resident Evil have been using the same assets from the previous titles again and again and again for it, but not for like in terms of creating entire levels out of it. Just like decoration, the same pot, the same plant, the same table used again. That is it. Some couple boxes. Big fucking whoop. There's crates. Crates for sure have been in more. Go take a look at a crate. Take a look at a crate in a game. See if you recognize that crate. See if you might have seen this crate before. Genuinely. In other games. Multiple, <laughs> multiple. dozen. <laughs> yeah. You probably have seen this crate before. You don't realize you've seen this crate before. Or see this tree. See that grass. <laughs> Again, extremely minor stuff. Like, a lot of times it's made for, like, just generic set decoration. A telephone pole. A random building. Uh, nothing super, super important. Usually. A lot of the time. It's the ones that feel much bigger game of nothing but asset rips, then you complain. But it's like just the tiniest bit. It's normal for the video game industry. It's okay. how it works because you know building everything from the ground up is difficult and time consuming. You just it's not logistically possible. It really isn't. But same time, just gotta be wary for things like that. Uh, Bleak Faith just didn't know that they were even using animations like you said from Again, it. And it was just being sold yeah. on the Epic Game Store. So yeah. Not their fault. Whoever sold the animations from uh, from software on Epic, that's on them. Technically, it's uh, it's Epic's fault uh, for this because they should have seen this coming in the first place and get rid of it. They haven't yet. <laughs> and uh, that that probably is the biggest problem on that one. But we'll see how that plays out. All right, let's see. Is there anything else we have to mention? Nothing else. Hey, Dave, want to talk about the Little Mermaid? <laughs> Fucking. <sick. laughs> Fucking Sebastian has like regular eyes, his regular crab. It's only about the trailer. Everything else looks like an amazing, amazing movie. It's, it's gonna be Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. Nothing. It's a child and movie. To, again, to play Devil Gas get a little bit, but honestly, in a fair point for it, they it's it's not likely they're gonna put an actual human face on a fucking crab. They weren't not. gonna it do that. It. 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 It's kind of funny. <laughs> it would be funny. It would be creepy, especially for a live action film like this. But. Honestly, I don't have any issues with it outside of the crab part, but I saw that coming because we've seen the Lion King one, and that was a mess because they couldn't put human fa- human facial features on the animals. But, it's so you know, it'd be like that. Sebastian is, in fact, a crab, so he looked like a crab. Yeah. <laughs> crab, yeah. <laughs> no set on that one, other than that. Um, but, yeah, is I it, agree. The, the movie does yeah. look great. Uh, I'm looking forward to just seen it myself i'd like honestly. to see it yes before i make any real opinions because honestly everything i've seen so far that doesn't i don't see anything like too too bad i hopefully uh hayley barry is able to do performance and sing pretty well i'm sure she will she will it, it, as long as they don't change anything drastic for it we good because I, I don't have any ill will for this film at, at the point hopefully the reviews uh, reflect that but we'll just have to wait and see for real <clears throat> um what's another thing I would like to talk about Devil Within Sagat. Sagat. Oh, go for it. Yeah, Devil Within Sagat is a cyberpunk uh, Japanese aesthetic looking uh, side scrolling beat em up. Uh, not beat em up, but side scrolling uh, hack and slasher. Some of that of, uh, well, like um, Fist, uh, Forge, and Shadow Torch, and a bunch of other than Strider because it looks dope. It really loves to look cool and the combo systems, uh, flashy finishers, and the environment just looks really cool. Makes this a futuristic Japanese feudal aesthetic. I was about, I remember mm-hmm. looking at that earlier and being like, you know, this is kind of clean. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Did you take a look at Lethal Honor or the Apocalypse yet? I did not, actually. I needed to. Give it a shot. Yeah, yeah give, I want to hear your reaction on the podcast. All right. Let me go ahead and find that one because I have not. Hard it's uh, right above Kingdom 80s. Kingdom 80s. And underneath Chasing the, Uns- Chasing the Unseen, which I did pot- brought this up on Keep a Lookout for in the previous episode. Oh, which one? Chasing the Unseen or Lethal? Yeah, Chasing the Unseen, because I brought that up on oh, the yeah, previous yeah, episode. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. one that... Yeah. Okay, Lethal Horror. Let's see. Let's see. 
Lethal Honor. Okay. Lethal Honor. Order of the Apocalypse. Okay, PlayStation, thank you. I understand. <laughs> I own a PlayStation 5. I don't need the advertisement for one. Buy another you one. You make me do buy another one. Yes. <laughs> Audience, to help him money, deal with without the advertisements, help him pay for YouTube Premium. Oh, man, this is cool. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I'll flip. This is actually kind of clean. <laughs> Look at the animation style, because it's, again, comic book styles I told you about before. Uh, enemies are 2D. Uh, player characters, 3D, which is interesting. Not gonna lie. For real. Uh, a lot of the... Oh, yeah, no, this is cool. It's not even, like, a fully... What's weird is it's in this, like, isometric, like... It's, like, a half-isometric kind of view for it. Because it's, it's mm-hmm. there, but it's, like... It's not the same, if that makes any sense. Like, it's zoomed out. Mm-hmm. But it's not yeah. as uh, zoomed out as most isometric games are in general. It's kind of like this... Uh, you know what it is? It's kind of a close-up, yeah. It reminds me of... um, uh, What is the name of the game? X-Men Legends, right? So if you had played those games and like one of the things you can do in those games is zoom in the camera um, specifically, like you can zoom it in and like tilt it. It's like that. Or like uh, the new Ultimate Alliance where it's um, the camera is always in like a more dynamic spot. It's not just always above. Mm-hmm. That's what it reminds me of. That's kind of really close to what it is. Except you're having this uh, it's really cool like Pretty fast pace, honestly. With how it's doing things. I like it. It's 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 dope. You know, this is cool. Alright, we have to check that out for sure. That's a that's a that's a call. <laughs> it is a vibe for sure. Alright, Pellet was right. You knew I would like it. I did in fact like it. I know your taste. Fair enough. Fair enough, you do. There was oh, another. and Devon, don't you want to... What about your opinions on the finals? I thought it'd be something you would like to play. Yeah. We... That is full and destructive uh, Rainbow Six Siege-looking game you mentioned. I we talked about... Oh, because we talked about it before. Damn. Okay. I, I, Jesus. <laughs> before the podcast, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. That is on me. I, I just... The finals... I, I can't wait to play this game. I'm going to tell everybody about this. It looks really fun. Let's see. It looks great, and it's like the destructive physics mechanics people have been begging for in like battlefield re- uh, for a long time and now it's completely the focus of the game like this looks just great this looks just a fun horrible. shooter <laughs> the... fun shooter break everything imaginable like yes nothing is safe for me the guy nothing is safe the guy <laughs> doing the trail has really bad aim it's just fun watching <laughs> he's just spraying everywhere it does not matter yeah. well again he doesn't care about hitting his target he just cares about blowing shit up that's no. true Oh my like, bro, damn, please. <laughs> Hit somebody, bro. Hit somebody. <laughs> I'm not hitting somebody. I'm hitting something. My fucker used like three clips to kill somebody. I'm like, bro. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, um. We. <laughs> <laughs> the finals looks really dope. I, I like to see. I like uh, this is a shooter I want to give a shout out, uh, shout out for for sure because it looks it looks fun. It just looks straight up. Fun. Oh yeah, we're gonna be checking that one out for sure. We've already downloaded some of the demos for it actually. Off rip, so mm-hmm. um, I believe the beta is out. So be sure to yeah. jump on we'll that get, when you the beta can, for sure. Everyone, um, I guess the last thing I want to mention on here is. Uh, so, we have a new Persona game, but there's mm-hmm. a catch. It's a mobile, it's a mobile game, title. but there's another catch. It's a brand new Persona mm-hmm. 5 Persona game, game, specifically, uh, game. Yep. taking place in yes. the same world, same. but with different characters mm-hmm. dealing with a very different threat. <laughs> yep. So, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Bummer, that's a mobile title, but it plays just like, just like Persona 5, so like, hopefully it's good, and hopefully it doesn't get bogged the fuck down with microtransactions. I would hope not. I mean, it looks like it's just pretty much a straightforward, like, it actually just looks like a straightforward game. Um, mm-hmm. So I think it'll be fine, because you know how they ported um, The World Ends With You from both DS to phones at, eventually, and they kept the full game? Yeah, that's kind like, of what it feels it, like, a little bit. Yeah. I'm oh here's the thing one of the few mobile games I actually type of mobile games I'm okay with is like if it's a straight up flat price uh, decently for a mobile title I'm okay with it if this is free to play 
I'm a bit. I'm gonna be a bit hesitant. Oh I'm yeah. Just gonna, it feels like yeah. the kind of thing that should probably be like two, three dollars on this, maybe five, right, on the store, and then you. Call I, will, it I would actually be willing to pay ten. Yeah, I that's fair. Be willing to pay 10. It's just yeah. it's just there, and you play it. Like it's just done. Yeah. And I'm kind of down for that. Kind of like that. Um, wasn't there like a Mass Effect game that was like that a long time ago? Or and Horn. The... Horn was another one like that too. Horn was that the, the Mass Effect game actually was a third person uh, cover based shooter. Something to that. The, that one. Well, the thing is, it had both. It, it was a had their kicking you too because you could you did pay for a certain amount of price because I played it when I had the phone mm. at the time. Uh, I think it was ten bucks, but you still you can pay microtransactions for power ups to skip through levels. Or yeah, yeah. Levels, make levels easier but, because you pay, you know, be able to pay for arbitrating rounds and all that. Why shit. would you? <laughs> I know. In that but, instance, why would you? Yeah. <laughs> Because they did, because uh, how it played was similar to that of the Dead Space mobile title. But that game I actually enjoyed because that one was a full fledged Dead Space game. True. That one was fun. It actually was creepy too. The game screen was fucking up, fucking with you the entire time. That's a vibe. Pretty big mobile titles of that quality. Well, I mean, I guess there's some that are kind of close to that. Like Genshin's kind of like that, right? But like. Genshin is a different aspect because it didn't start as a mobile title, was it? No, it was. It was a mobile title. It's it just what it is is Genshin launched um, the same if that makes any sense like it all launched at the same time okay. and they were so it's a they were platform type of thing yeah gotcha. they just like, um, on everything then I'll so, say this then because how Genshin designed it's a different philosophy for game design for multiples because it's from a different country versus American where a lot of it's just kind of like hamfistedness on microtransactions and all that shit well Genshin is kind of it. It, I mean, it's, it's a gotcha, it's a gotcha. game. It's, yeah. Like we're not gonna pretend <laughs> mint words like it's yes. not predatory, but it's not, you know uh, yeah. you don't but need it's to. It's possible to still enjoy the game without the predatory actions, as they tease you with a new character or such, along with it constantly, mm-hmm. which becomes predatory. The fact that it's loot box gotcha system makes it even more predatory. Um, but unfortunately, that is a ingrained culture, specifically in Japanese, because gotcha is Japanese. Um, yeah, so. True. But hmm. without further ado, let's get on to the keep an eye on. We got some stuff here for you guys to go check out. So let's take a nice little uh, look. All right, first. Uh, God damn it, I hate Twitter. How do you hate Twitter? Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Devon, why do I, why do you think I hate Twitter? <laughs> I just I just said it. I didn't even think about the question. <laughs> why do you hate me? <laughs> uh first up uh we have violet or at uh vial uh actually i don't know i gotta see why you like this one am i absolutely for violet oh yeah they're a um they're a 3d 3d pixel artist now the style is very similar to a favorite series of yours though oh i mean it's playstation aesthetics genuinely that's just mm-hmm. the deal but yeah i give you that it, it's mega man legend test a little bit Oh my <laughs> I, I mean, they even put a list of like their uh, art design, art style over the years, especially with this goth model Violet from original August 2020 to now. It's changed significantly, uh, many uh, quite a bit over the over the years. Cute. Oh yeah, for sure. But it's a vibe. I like it. Mm-hmm. It's cute. It's very cute. It's this. It's just the character model that they're working on for it, or is it the, turning into more than that? Nah, they're just a uh, an artist that does uh, artists with the like. Well, pretty much this entire style. They've done uh, just different uh, models and stuff like that. It's it's always good to support different types of artists. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, different collages for uh, things she likes to do. With, she likes to do with uh, most Minecraft stuff. Pixel, blocky pixel art look from a lot of different things. And her own OC, Violet, which is cool. So. Oh, oh okay. I've seen this typewriter. I've seen this before. This is actually seen her work on... Reddit with uh, the RE4 typewriter. That's kind of cool. <laughs> You're like, yes, RE4 typewriter. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't wait to play it. That's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. The typewriter's clean, though. So I'm going to look at it myself again. All right. Okay. Let's see. And the next one we have Rui Q. Uh, one of the aforementioned games they made, um, Ants Took My Eyes. Took my, Ants Took My Eyeball. <laughs> That's an interesting title. Okay, All let's right. see what that is. 
Um, it's a four-player local co-op roguelike action platformer. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. So it's um, so it's like a uh, samurai gun gameplay with platform uh, shooter, twin stick a little bit, or, but it's four-player local co-op, killing hordes upon bugs and everything. Probably the answer she took our eyeballs. That's fair. But Death is rather permanent. But uh, the one I actually wanted to pay attention to a bit is their new game that they released on uh, its.io, which is uh, the Random Answer. Which... A dice rolling action lane defense game where your device or your units. Oh, okay, so that's okay. So it's like a mix of um, uh, uh, plants for zombies, but you roll a dice to see what unit you get. Exactly. That sounds that's, like that's fun. That's fun. <laughs> that does sound fun. Hectic too. Like shit. Please be good. Please be good. Please be good. Damn it. Damn it. That's not good at all. <laughs> it's like so test your luck and you know your defensive skills and see how this plays out. Also, the, I like how the dice can attack enemies, too. <laughs> yeah, you, if you throw them well, well, good enough for it, and hopefully it lands in your favor. No, I mean, like, the dice physically, when you I throw it, they, can hit enemies. Yeah, it attacks it. You can you ping-pong it for it, but it really... I, because of how it impacts it, it probably can affect your dice roll, so... That's true. You're not wrong. But Random Mantle looks like a vibe. I actually kind of want to mess around with this. I might give it a shot. Especially since it's on its like, oh, you just go ahead and grab it. Yep. Uh, speaking of Ditch.io, I forgot I own a shitload of games on there, too. Yeah, no, never forget that. There's a bunch of really good ones over there. Oh, no, no, no. I bought a bundle a while back, and I forgot the games I have on it. Let me check the... Uh, have, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, There's a lot out there. I have 34 pages of games. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, you have a, you have a lot. <laughs> Was it a game game uh, game jam thing? I wonder if it was a game jam thing. I don't know. I have uh, yeah, I have three four ga- three or four pages of games on here. I have Evergate, Nog, Skatebird, Fizz, Fuzz Dungeon, Backbone, Cloud Gardens, Gunmail, Arcadia Zero, Crosscode, Thirsty Sword Lesbians. Alrighty then. Well, <laughs> you did say def- you bought it as a bundle, so you got what you got in that. <laughs> Again, this is okay. This is a personal problem of mine. I I buy it. A lot of things on sale, typically like bundles and stuff, and I forget exactly what's in them and never visit it until much, much later. When did I fucking buy the unofficial book of Undertale? <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> um, but next up on our list, we have uh, Runa, or Runa RPG, uh, on Twitter as well. This one's a turn-based fantasy RPG that is in uh, early development on Unreal Engine Oh, 3D turn-based, okay. Yeah. I like the environments so far. Um, I think it does have really nice environments off route. Unreal Engine 5, that makes a lot of sense. And their light effects looks really good. Usually Unreal Engine does it really well. I'm trying to go to the part where you see the uh, combat mechanics. So far, I've just been seeing exploration. Same, there's a lot of... um... Walking. This will just yeah, just a lot of walking. I mean, I appreciate the, the walking. The landscape like are pretty amazing in general. I just want to yeah. stay. Well, they did say it was turn based anyway, so we kind of have an idea of what it is. I just want to see. I like what to see like, like the yeah, the interface and menu system and all that such. Or uh, okay, this is getting giving me heavy foam messy vibes. Oh Dude, yeah, no, this sword, looks like hair. yeah, this looks yeah. like fun. like there's a couple shots in this that I looked at it and was like. This is kind of just cloud, isn't it? <laughs> it's, this, yeah, District Six of the Port City to uh, to Kun. Um, dude with big sword, spiky hair, big city. It's more color than Final Fantasy, not gonna lie, though. Well, it depends on the Final Fantasy. Because 7, I think 7 and uh, 8, no, not 8. What's the one right before, 7 and, uh, maybe it's 6? I think it's 6. Yeah. Because, you know, numbers, the 6 comes before 7, Amani. No, but I couldn't remember which one, because I'm trying to remember, uh, the one with Zidane and them, and I'm like, I can't remember if that's 6, or if that was, uh, if that was nine, which one had BB? That was six. Yeah. Okay. Because six was colorful as well, mm-hmm. and seven, seven. Once you got out of Midgard, had Midgard, a turn of we color. Got colorful color, yeah. <laughs> but Midgard itself is kind of dreary but green. But that is kind of the point, right? So yeah. it's like, well. Okay. Okay. So they expand their interaction system, be able to do pick up items, but so far nothing on the combat aspect yeah i'm not seeing anything so far but they have a ton of exploration which is kind of probably uh, hasn't gotten to it 
as of yet to fully show off. So, but we'll be watching. We'll be watching for sure. Oh, for sure, the world in this looks amazing. So, well, yeah, it looks cool. It's looks gonna be great. fun to explore I, at least. <laughs> I just like to know how it's done because I know it's turn uh, turn tech, uh, turn based, but like, is it uh, action turn based as you play right where you're located, or it goes full it's full tactics, classic yeah. fantasy where it fades into a different area? That's a, I mean, it's a fair oh, point. Oh, found it! I found it. I did. Wow. Yeah. Uh, way further down, April tenth. Uh, Twitter. Um. Okay. It. Play menu system reminds me uh, a little of it's uh, they take inspiration from Persona. April tenth. Yeah, way down, way down, April tenth. Yeah, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm in maze right now. Come on. April tenth, twenty twenty, twenty twenty two. Yeah. Okay, I found it. Oh yeah, no, this is clean. Yeah, it's very Persona. <laughs> oh, that's very Persona. <laughs> it's nice though. It's, it's stylish. Some system is cool. Yeah, I like it. It's a vibe. Young beauty. Young beauty. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let us go to the last one on this list, which is Toy Hunter. I don't but, know if we talked about this. Better before, be Toy Hunter. Definitely mention it. Hundred percent Toy Hunter. Toy Hunter, Toy Hunter the, the fighting, fighting game. game. Okay. So, well, let's see how it... funny enough, okay, I mentioned some fun things about how this one might be earlier. So, uh, so do we remember Power Stone? Because that's what this reminds yeah. me of. <laughs> Power Stone, but with a lot it. more items. <laughs> also, that tank is is just an SNK tank. That is just that is Metal Slug all day. That's a Metal Slug that's tank. Metal yeah, slug that's tank. a straight up Metal Slug tank. Yeah, a tennis racket you can smash some ass with. God damn, that's a whole lot of boxes. It's a lot of boxes. Okay, full on physics system with the boxes because you keep the particle effects from the boxes you break there easy. But nah. They stay. They they don't. They the particle of the boxes stay. <laughs> nah, this game looks awesome. Um, it looks I cool. want to play a Power Stone game, and so far none of the ones that have come out have really matched what I wanted exactly. Or, well, this be... looks slower than Power Stone, but uh, definitely a uh, definitely good vibe for sure. I think this. <laughs> it either hasn't really matched the aesthetic or. Something. They, okay, so, something about so, it's always a little off. You guys ever played that little fishing uh, motor game where you take a, a little uh, magnet fish uh, fishing rod and pick up fishes out of a tray? I have. I do remember this. They 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 have a tweet on here that they might add that stage a toy hunter. Do it. They should do it. They should do it for sure. Also, I That's like a funny. lot of the designs for this. Like as I'm scrolling through and seeing all the characters that they have. In My it. dude is wielding a yo-yo as a weapon. Yeah, these are vibes. I like these characters. <clears throat> Yeah, man, that not for cool. a Power Stone type game. I need more of these, just in general. Arcade. I, I really want to go to Japan to play on arcade, man. That looks dope. Oh no, this is definitely Power Stone. You could do the thing with the boxes. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's played Power Stone knows what to do. You could just hop over it, throw it. <laughs> yeah, nah. Bomb R. This is gonna be fun. Oh, uh, you can even use a little arcade machine to uh, summon bombs. Like a bomb. Yeah, that's that's hella Power Stone. Those gun. Yep. I mean, like, well, that's the beauty of indie game development. If after years of fans who don't make the sequel to the game they want or another game like that, they're just like, fine, I'll do it myself. Damn, wait a minute. This is six players? <laughs> yeah, six players. I didn't catch that little bit of the UI on the bottom. That's crazy. Hey, you and all it's your like friends. Half, it's half the roster. They may lessen that down depending on if they can handle the full six-player thing. I don't know, man. I don't think they would have put six players if they couldn't handle it off rip. No, no, no. They, <laughs> they're planning on it. They haven't fully uh, manipulated that because the max of characters you see on the screen is up to four at the moment. That's true. But, man, I want to see. Six-player Power Stone <laughs> sounds absolutely chaotic and amazing at the same <laughs> time. I want it. It sounds fun. It sounds fun. But, uh, that's gonna do it. So, oh, without further ado, we will bring uh, this episode to a close. So, everybody, let's uh, go ahead and appreciate you guys. Thank you, Devon. Thank you, Pele, for joining me on this episode. Always a pleasure to have you, too. Yes. Late o'clock, uh, as always. <laughs> late o'clock. It's not that long. We gotta fix it. We gotta fix it. Was, it was as long as it should have been. It should have been. Expected to be four hours, it was only two. Yeah. Don't try to introduce. So sometimes it doesn't <laughs> work like that. <laughs> yeah. It always ends up being later, but hey, this is really about a good time though. Um as
as well as um oh obviously we have to thank our the audience for joining us on this episode as well thanks for listening guys we always appreciate you um obviously let's go down the rundown of things that you usually have to do so if you have a question for us and want us to answer it on Action, we can do that at paperplayaction at gmail.com that is paperplayaction at gmail.com send that there uh, type it away you can answer it on there if you want to um as well let's think um we also have if you want to support the show you can also go to um you can go to our twitter uh paper underscore action there is a link on our twitter for koji that is our tip box you can do that there or you can hit us up at cash app uh, which is paper play action on cash app or uh there was another one but i forgot oh our patreon <laughs> that's a thing too if you want to support us in any way so that's always fun you can not, always you, join not that you forgetting the outro hmm? not you forgetting the outro it happens know, sort of funny. we've added a lot of things to it it's weird <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you can definitely follow us on Twitter anyway, just to kind of get updates and things like that for the shows and things like that. We do everything. constantly tweeting out stuff about games and stuff like that that we find, little bits and pieces of news that we might not directly mention, but, like, just little updates on some of the stuff, like, keep an eye on stuff that we mention all the time. They're constantly putting out updates, and so we just tweet out about them letting you guys know that, like, hey, look, they're still working on stuff, but the cool stuff is happening things of that nature same with the channel let you know if like we're and if it's gonna be delayed or not or little things like that it's just you know um and i think that's pretty much what we're gonna do it the last thing we're gonna do is just thank you guys and again for you know, coming out join us spread the show tell people about it stay on the way uh that's too you know we get around let's do word of mouth so if you're enjoying it just let people know best way to do it and we all get to talk about it and the paper play nation grows it's fun to be a uh, giant growing i say giant <laughs> we're not giant yet we're not giant yet that's the point let's get there that's the plan guys <laughs> we gotta be giant <laughs> but whatever we'll do we'll bring this to an end so we'll catch you guys later good night have a good day